Cobra Commander falls onto his back, looking up. He looks around, he grabs a hold of the sword, and he points it up at you. You'll never take me alive, Joes! Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the RPG Academy. Another exciting sample adventure tonight is we're going to do the G.I. Joe, the role-playing game. Uh, tonight, I get to be your host. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Chris. Uh, I'm usually on here every other Wednesday with Michael and doing detention and some other shows. You can also hear me on the Redemption podcast, which is now doing Smuggler's Blues, which we're streaming that every other Monday. Uh, tonight, on YouTube. Yeah. Very nice. Tonight, playing the G.I. Joe game, I get to play Duke. Kind of the officer in charge of everybody. Uh, joining me, uh, I'll start right over here kind of to my left. Uh, we've got Corey. Corey, please Hi. introduce yourself and tell us who you're playing. Uh, I am Corey. Yeah, you can also call me a little loud mouse or just mouse. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be playing Roadblock, who is going to be a very fun character to play. And uh, normally you can find me either on Midnight Alley Podcast or on Itch at Little Loud Mouse. So. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, it's going to be fun. Below you on my screen, we have Kaylee. Good evening, Kaylee. How are you? Good evening, Chris. I'm doing okay. As Chris mentioned, I am Kaylee. You can find me at Anime Girl on the Internets, uh, also on Smuggler's Blues at youtube.com slash ampersand, or not ampersand, at Smuggler's Blues. And tonight, I'm going to be playing Scarlet, who is the basically the love child of Hawkeye and Black Widow, but much more Black Widow and uh, very good at teaching people how to kill things with weapons. Awesome. That might be the best explanation I've ever heard for Scarlet, actually. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to give Corey credit for part of that. So <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty, pretty she right She helped refine on. it. Nice. Pretty right on. And uh, directly below me on the screen, we have joining me as Michael. How are you tonight? <laughs> uh, good, Chris. Good. Uh, I'm Michael. Uh, use he, him pronouns. You can catch me on the socials at LoserMLW. I can also be found on Smuggler's Blues with Kaylee and Chris. You can also find me on Wednesdays on Rook and Rasp on the Dragon Age show, A Time of Masks and Daggers. Uh, and you can see me, or you can hear me, I should say, on the Power Rangers inspired audio drama, Tubular Teens with Titans. Uh, you can find that on your podcatchers. Tonight, I'll be playing Snake Eyes, the mute martial mute. arts master. That's going to be fun. Mute. That's a perfect place for you, I think, Michael. You're going to fit right in. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Wait, let me try out my sign language. <laughs> right? Perfect. That's one. That's your one. You got it. You got it. Perfect. Nice. The uh, guy with the best radio voice is playing the guy who doesn't talk. So, <laughs> Right. <laughs> Rounding out our show tonight, our game master, uh, Kevin. Why don't you introduce yourself and talk us through how the system works a little bit and yeah. tell us about the game. Yeah, I'd love to, for sure. Yeah, hi, I'm Kevin, and I will be your Game Master this evening. I can be found online at the socials at Kevran Games. Uh, I'm guesting here. I've been on RPG Academy before. I always love popping in and doing stuff here, and uh, it's always a good time, so thanks for having me back. Uh, when I'm not here, I'm found over on Wanderer's Haven Productions. I'm on the production team there. We run a bunch of stuff. Actually, I'm double teaming tonight. How do I do it? Who knows? But we're going to be doing this, and then later, we got a little bit of a show coming on. We're playing Pacific Rim Skull Island battle royale you gotta mm. watch it to believe it that'll be on after this actually so we'll see what happens with that pre-recorded <laughs> but anyway um yeah so uh, i'm happy to be here i'll be your game master today we're playing the gi joe role-playing game as chris already mentioned it is a game that is put out by renegade game studios it uses their new well not really new at this point it's been a couple of years now but it uses their new essence 20 system which is the same system that they use for the power rangers role-playing game and the transformers role-playing game and supposedly there's some other things coming up soon too uh they have a new book coming out you can kind of combine all three things that'll be kind of fun but today we're focusing on gi joe for those of you who don't know what G.I. Joe is, shame on you and on your parents uh, for not having you, you know, 30 years ago as opposed to like five minutes ago. Uh, G.I. <laughs> Joe is a cartoon series. Uh, they are, you know, it's an international, um, it says G.I. Joe in an American term, but they're an international group of super soldiers, you know, best of the best uh, that go on adventures, teaching kids a nice, good moral lesson while fighting the Cobra Commander and his elite army of Cobra. So, maybe we'll do a little bit of that tonight. 
Uh, the Essence 20 system is pretty similar to what we find in most role-playing games. Uh, we're rolling dice. The Myself will be all the other characters, but these four are going to be the main characters. If this was a movie, they're like the main, the main show, as it were. Uh, they're going to go through. We're going to make decisions, play a game, and they're going to roll for most things. They're going to roll a D20, 20-sided die added to whatever they have for a specific skill. So, for example, say, I don't know, Scarlet wants to shoot somebody, okay? Then she might be making that attack with a uh, targeting roll. And so you roll a d20 plus what you would have for your speed rating. And if you have a targeting rating, you would roll that die type as well, add it all together versus a target number. Uh, sure. though, there's a little bit more to it than that, but we'll get into it as we go. We'll uh, help you all follow along as we play, but... Uh, I believe this is uh, the first time playing Essence 20 for most of us here. So mm -hmm. not me, but uh, I've played it before, luckily. But um, Thank God. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've played it before. I, I've run a Power Rangers game, which is a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so we're going to just rock and roll. Um, yeah, let's do I it. I really Joe. liked what you said about, you know, we're the main characters. Like, we get all the lines. Oh, yeah. sorry, Michael. Oh, <laughs> ouch. Oof. Too soon, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like what you did there. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. All righty. So uh, these these folks, uh, they are part of the G.I. Joe force. Uh, specifically, what has happened in most recent, I guess you could say, in the previous parts of the season, as it were, if this were a TV show. Uh, they've gone on several missions. They're already established G.I. Joe's. We're starting right in the middle of everything. This isn't an origin story. These are established heroes. And specifically, you all four were involved with a pretty tactical strike against Cobra, your arch nemesis. Cobra is led by, of course, the evil and nefarious Cobra commander, who is a helmeted warlord from some unknown other bad guy country place. He's depicted on my screen right here. This guy, I'm going to scratch his head a little bit wake him up um yeah i have cobra behind me these are the bad guys behind me so watch out um <laughs> but um yeah so just returning back from a mission recently very successful mission uh as you are making your way back towards the pit which is the main headquarters for gi joe you are all coming in uh you are all various different transportations uh some of you arrive in a tank helicopter battle boat whatever it might be but in this moment as we see the joes all approaching all celebrating there is planes that shoot by overhead trailing beautiful colored smoke a couple of fireworks maybe off in the distance a celebration <laughs> of the success of defeating cobra as you all come in i want to just take a minute let's go around the table and let's say you know a little bit about how you all picture your characters um let's start with duke the field commander of the G.I. Joes, you step up out of your tank first and make your approach towards the pit and General Hawk, who is your behind the scenes leader. So tell us about Duke. Uh, Duke is, you know, like every soldier in good shape. Uh, he carries himself very upright, very confident. He's got the flowing blonde hair that whenever the wind is blowing, it always moves it just the right way. Uh, he's got the bright blue eyes that seem to see everything, and he takes in all the scenery around him. He's got a tan uh, army shirt on with green pants with the big pockets, and he's got his weapons on his hips. And he's looking around, smiling, happy that another successful mission. Absolutely, absolutely. As you approach, kind of taking the lead of the other Joes as you make your way towards the pit, as I mentioned, you're going to see General Hawk. He is an older gentleman, mustached. He actually, in this specific day, he has a uh, captain's uh, hat on. He's in the full dress fatigues. Well done, Joes, he says as you all approach. He puts a warm handshake out towards you, Duke. Uh, you, this guy is a, like a mentor to you. You've been part of the mm -hmm. G.I. Joe team for a while, and he's always been there and had your back. And uh, he looks on. I trust everything went well out there. Cobra didn't know what hit him. <laughs> huh. Of course, sir. Successful mission as always. Excellent, excellent. And, of course, the rest of the team deserves a congratulation as well. And he reaches for the next hand that comes up, and we'll say it is going to be scarlet that walks up behind so if we could i mean we have a picture behind you of course but tell us a little about scarlet maybe her personality how she carries herself listen a little about her 
Uh, Skylight walks up behind Duke, uh, taking off a helmet. She had been riding a motorcycle uh, next to the tank. Uh, you know, the standard, you know, sports bike, but definitely Joe issue because there's no plates. It's kind of this mul- dull matte black. And she also has pulled off this helmet that is, you know, dull matte black, also very bulletproof. And she shakes out a red ponytail and settles uh, a, a crossbow across her back that is strapped across her chest. And she re- comes forward and reaches out and shakes the general's hand as well. They had no idea we were coming. So it's everything went as planned for a change. Excellent. Of course, I trusted a mission in good hands with you as well, Scarlet. It's always good to see you taking the lead alongside Duke, one of the best of the best out there. I'd ask this next guy here what he has to say, but we all know he's a little bit quiet. He says, kind of cocking your head towards you, Snake Eyes, who slips out of the shadows, it would seem, even though it's a bright, sunny day. Tell us a little bit about Snake Eyes. Now, you can talk, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Snake Eyes does slip out of the shadow uh, of the the large tank, and uh, following behind Snake Eyes, you do see a, a somewhat large timber wolf uh, plodding up behind him. And uh, it Snake Eyes stops and gives the uh, general salute and... Uh, then bends down to the wolf and starts kind of petting the wolf a bit. Uh, Snake Eyes is wearing his classic, uh, classic gear: the the dark suit, the bandolier with a couple of uh, explosives and uh, throwing stars on it. Uh, he's got a one large katana strapped to his back, and he's got a couple of sidearms on his hips, and wearing the trademark helmet, uh, which shows none of his face, just a large vented visor. Of course, yes. He is a man of mystery, a uh, ninja by trade and by design. And uh, yeah, he approaches. Remind us of what is your little furry friend, your wolf? What is his name? Timber. Timber. That's right. Yes, Timber is a part of the Joe team as well, even though he is just a wolf. He is tried and true in battle as well and has fought beside you many a time. And uh, and Snake Eyes will make a motion to Timber and then kind of point off in a direction and Timber like timber like kind of just gives a, a little sharp bark and then heads off toward the base oh absolutely uh general hawk just kind of gives a nod to, to timber as well looks back to the rest and of course you roadblock i'm sure you held down the fort with no problem yeah, they don't call me roadblock for nothing hmm. and roadblock is very very large as he has always described uh very muscular um he's got bare arms with a tattoo on one arm. Would uh, you say thick? Very thick, yes. <laughs> three C's. Uh, That's right. Three right. C's. Thick. Um, does give the general a very crisp salute because he does have that army background in him. Uh, just kind of gives a big old grin. You know, I think I think I'm going to make some steak for it, buddy. A little crawfish <laughs> wow. sauce. Excellent. There was a little celebration. I like what I'm hearing, Joes. I will uh, do a full debriefing with you all in just a moment. I think it's time to start getting this celebration under proper. And he slaps you on the shoulder, Duke, as he gets a little (laughs) bit more relaxed. And you all start following him in towards the base. Um, As you all start going into the base, um, what sort of... uh, what sort of vibes do you all have from one another here? I mean, you as Joes, you've all been working together for some time. Uh, you know, what what would be your wind down kind of look like? How, how do you all interact with each other in this moment? Do you think? I think uh, Scarlet. Once the general turns and heads off towards the base, Scarlet turns to look over at Snake Eyes and just kind of looks him up and down, looking for any signs of bullet wounds, stab wounds, shuriken wounds, knife wounds, whatever, uh, and not really seeing much. She just quirks an eyebrow at him, like just this nonverbal communication style that they've picked up. And she's obviously very, and she walks over to him to kind of check up on him. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Snake Eyes will, will look up and you see him actually lift the visor uh, and like pull the headpiece off. And it is uh, Snake Eyes has the features of a a young, uh, I should say, a somewhat young man, uh, late twenties, early thirties, uh, sandy blonde hair, cut very short. He's got a scar 
uh, a very visible scar across his throat. Um, uh, and um, he just nods and and uh, mouths okay. She walks over and like puts a hand on his shoulder, stands up, kind of leans up, gives him a little kiss and says, all right, so clean up. We're having steaks. Take care. You want to take care of Timber or shall I? All right. I'll see you inside. And Scarlet will turn and start taking off the leather riding jacket she had holding her crossbow and head towards uh, the wep- like the weapons storage area to take care of her gear before she relaxes. Absolutely. Yeah. No problem at all. Uh, Snake Eyes, where, do you follow or do you go someplace else on the base? Do you think? Um, Snake Eyes, Snake Eyes, uh, like nods to Duke and then uh, looks at Roadblock and like makes a couple of small hand gestures, but then of, of course, uh, like just gives him a, a thumbs up for the stakes and then uh, heads out to take care of Timber. Absolutely, absolutely. Duke Roadblock, what are you folks doing here? Yeah, Roadblock's going to call after a snake eyes leave some room for t- for timber to have a snake <laughs> leave some room for timber to have a steak bud and as he's running away snake eyes like you know there's like <laughs> yeah, he deserves one too mm-hmm. and with that uh roblox gonna start heading to the kitchen he's just gonna keep his gun with him it's just gonna be Here's a dedicated corner in the kitchen for it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You said Roblox he's got the, the big chef? saw, right? He's got that giant, like he's got a, like, yeah, it's something. The chain fed, right? Roadblock's got the big chain fed machine gun. Yeah, he shoots yeah, big, yeah, big, big, yeah. heavy gun. Yes, yeah, I think, yeah oh yeah, the anti tank gun. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. Yes. Oh yeah, think, heavy fire. I think you see Duke. He is standing outside greeting all of the soldiers as they come in, shaking hands, saying, good job, pat people on the back. And he watches as everybody comes into the base, and then he's one of the last ones to walk in and make sure that the guards are set up and make sure everything's ready for the pit. And then he heads in, looking pretty tired, but ready to celebrate. Absolutely. Great, I love that. Yeah, so you all go in, meeting up with the other Joes. You know, there are various different soldiers from different walks of life that have all come together in this shared mission to make the world a better place. You all go around different parts of the pit, getting ready. Roblox, you whip up some great steaks. Or do you, for fun, Roblox, let's have you roll to see how great your cooking is going to be tonight. <laughs> oh, no. uh, so we're going to first roll the night cooking steaks. Why not? Uh, we could do whatever we want here. because if you're having Hoping fun, for you're high right. numbers. Hoping That's for fun. high numbers. Let's go ahead and let's make, well, what what do you think you would roll as? I, I can kind of make a guess, or maybe you can make a guess too, but I'm thinking maybe this might be performance. This could perhaps be finesse. This could perhaps be, I don't know, if you just want to beat the stake into submission, this could be brawn. I don't know. What do we, <laughs> what kind of I think I'm gonna go think with, uh, I think I'm going to go with a uh, performance because it's definitely, the kitchen is his domain. Oh, it's, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, he, he does the G.I.G. Joe fu- stuff for fun, but okay. he loves his kitchen. I love that. Cool. So, right, so you're going to go ahead and make a, a social role, so, uh, a social performance role. So specifically, you're going to roll a D20. Uh, do you have any ranking in the performance skill? It says D4. Okay. So you're going to roll a D20 and a D4 and add the two together uh, as your total target result. Oh, that's a four, and I'm assuming that my cleverness is uh, what that would add to for an 18. That guy's right, going yep. to dice jail. <laughs> I don't <laughs> roll a three on the d20. Oh, Ooh. wow. Nice. Uh, do you said you rolled a four on your d4? Uh, I rolled a three on the d20 and a one on the d4. Oh, Ooh. oof. Just thought I'd make sure. Mm. Just thought I'd make sure because if I wasn't hungry anyway. <laughs> <laughs> because in this system, if you roll the max number on any of the die included in the die pool, that acts as a critical. So you could roll oh, like nice. say a four on your D twenty, but still get say a ten on your D ten and be successful, and it might still be a, a critical. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. But yeah, but in a specific case, yeah, 18 is more than enough for you to cook a great steak. Yeah, you are cooking up some some meals and passing them around, and everybody is really enjoying the steak. Maybe there's a couple of other Joes who are vegans or vegetarians, want to have something a little bit less, uh, you know, meaty. But hey, 
That's on them. <laughs> they're Portobello in that in that case. Oh, even, there you go. I love that. Yeah. So you uh, but yeah, everybody's enjoying the moment, really kind of having fun and just kind of winding down for the evening. And after about about a couple of hours, I'd say about two hours. Uh, you're all feeling pretty good, really enjoying the camaraderie, sharing stories, swapping out information about the time that you had out in the field. And while you're all doing this, let's have you all. Um, I'm going to have, we'll start with, um, we'll start with you, Roblox. I think maybe you're in the middle of all the different Joes surrounded by you're kind of grilling up. Tell us something, a highlight, as it were, of the mission you guys just came back from. Something that you did that kind of just stood out. Well, blocking an escape attempt by just standing in the middle of the road with a uh, Maduce, that big old gun, just like try running me over. I will shoot your engine kind of moment. <laughs> just absolutely nonchalant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You stood down a tank, you played chicken with a tank and uh, apparently you won. Right. <laughs> Very cool. I love that. I love that. Um, how about you, Scarlet? What was something that you did in the mission that really stood out, really helped turn the tide against Cobra? Scarlet did a lot of lying, laying the ground work for the mission. Uh, she actually had spent uh, three weeks undercover near this Cobra base that we attacked. And uh, she had been infiltrated there as like just, you know, menial help type things. And she was actually the one that opened the reinforced gates to let the Joe's let the Joe caravan in. So she was actually there and jumped down from like, there's like a flashback. And as Duke's tank rolls through um, with her bike on the trailer behind, she, you can see her drop down from on top of one of the gates uh, and land on the motorcycle, grabbing her crossbow off of like a holster as they open fire and there's explosions. And Oh yeah. Yeah. Very actiony. I love it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that really helped turn the tide against Cobra for sure. Uh, I think in that exchange, we didn't, you did mention that Duke, you know, driving his tank in Duke, was this the pivotal moment for you in the battle or was there something else that really defined Duke's leadership quality in this moment? Do you think? I think the big part for Duke was when he identified that Cobra had actually had a secret uh, little group that was about to ambush the Joes from the side. And he managed to can not convince, but, spot that turn his tank lead up a hill and fired several shots that caused an avalanche that actually buried all of the cobra vehicles <laughs> that were about to come in and hit the side of his joes nice always ready i love that and snake eyes i mean you don't really tell the tale maybe you acted out for us all but uh what, oh, what, what certainly what with a combination of sign language and some fun charades type antics uh, Snake Eyes depicts a a riding of a motorcycle with a sidecar up to uh, one of the platoons on the the Cobra platoons on the side, and uh, dismounting both he and Timber, uh, and Timber running up to Major Blood's his tank and dropping a string of grenades along the the left uh, tread, um, as uh, Snake Eyes uh, then took out one of the uh, Bat troopers on the side absolutely yeah and then you know major blood pops out the top of the tank but as your toes <laughs> that's it absolutely yeah so as you can see yeah you as you recall the moment yeah you all clearly showcase that you are the best of the best nothing gets past you and you all are ready for action at just a moment's notice and while you're enjoying this revelry there is suddenly a click from somewhere nearby and with that, one by one, all the different lights in the pit. First, you could tell it's the outside because the spotlights from outside, now that the sun is setting, go off. And then it's part of the perimeter, clicks shut. Then there's different corridors around. We would see the lights click off. And then finally, the pit, the, the main hold area where you guys are all partying and relaxing, all the lights shut off, bathing you all in darkness for a moment. There's a brief second where nothing seems to happen. You're waiting for alarms. You're waiting for General Hawk to shout out orders so that you all can spring into action. But none of that comes. Then there was a sound. Duke, on your radio, you hear a familiar voice. Ah, Joes! You think you can celebrate in your revelry? But I will be victorious today. 
You guessed it. It is I, Cobra Commander. And you will be defeated. I have General Hawk. And I will destroy him with your very own weapons. <laughs> and it clicks off shut. It is then that you all start to hear the sounds of helicopter blades whirring on top of an approaching vehicle. What would you all like to do? Oh, uh, Snake Eyes definitely, uh, like, dons his, like, pulls the mask out, dons the mask, and just bolts for the uh, the surface. All right, yeah. You, you take off at a sprint. Uh, silent as the grave. You zip on out of there. What's everybody else doing? Duke immediately starts giving commands. He starts <laughs> pointing to people. You get in your vehicle. You get in your vehicle. Get to the anti-aircraft guns. Roadblock. Go get your big anti-aircraft gun and get out there. <laughs> yes, I'm away. Grumbling about feeding Cobra Commander Crow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scarlet is on, basically following uh, Storm Shadow out. Uh, even in the the shadowy lights as the alarm like the the red alarm lights start to come on you can see that she's she's was wearing like just a like a tank top and shorts she was relaxing but she has her pistol silencer being screwed on as she runs down the hall chasing after storm shadow absolutely storm um shadow. hopefully guys, yeah hopefully guys. not storm shadow uh, I'm sorry, snake eyes. Snake eyes. <laughs> so why is the joke if Storm Shadows eyes? infiltrated the base, we have bigger problems. <laughs> yes, right, right. Yeah, exactly. uh, I gave something away. Uh, please ignore that. And we're going to retcon that last comment. Uh, chasing after her paramour there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> chasing after the uh, silent, but oh, so strong. The strong, silent type snake eyes. I said what I said. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, I'm Snake Eyes, therefore, I think it is you who is going to get outside first. As you come right. bolting outside, Timber comes up from his place nearby. He really, he didn't stray that far away from you. As mm -hmm. the two of you come out, you see that there is, in fact, a very large helicarrier just outside the perimeter of the pit base. As it okay. approaches, you can see that the sides of it begin to open up, and then there are several Cobra troops that begin to belay and zip line down towards the ground where you all are. Now, luckily... Typically, there is defenses along the perimeter here that would prevent them from coming in. But with mm -hmm. the power off, you're not sure what's going to happen here. Um, in this moment, I would like you to, if you could, please go ahead. I want you to roll a, uh, it's going to be uh, smarts mm -hmm. alertness roll. I want to see if you notice something that's going on. Now, something right. I should mention is when you make rolls, do you happen, does anybody happen to have any specializations listed beneath the skill? Let me know, because specializations give you a bonus on stuff. I do not have one for alertness, but in my alertness, I do have the D2 and D4 both pipped. Mm -hmm. So you would roll the higher of the ones that you okay. have circled. If you have a specialization, you get to do something a little bit different. So okay. we will, uh, we'll see what happens with that. All right, so I have a D20 and a D4 for That's my right. smarts. Yes. All right. Let's see what we got. Come on. Okay. Kev, you, you you moved your mic away a little bit, so it's getting harder to hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, let me. Uh, so, that? Kevin, yes. just out of curiosity, yes, because this is gonna, you know, this hopefully will be the only time this comes up. Uh oh, what happens if you roll a one on both of your dice? Oh <laughs> my! Well, every time you roll a one, it's you know going to be a critical failure, a botch, mm -hmm. perhaps you want to call mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. In the game, there is a currency that we all get to use called story points that you can use to affect the story of the game. Now, you're all going to get an extra story point because you just rolled that. However, okay, you're welcome, everybody. Yes, but that's a pretty bad failure. So, okay. unfortunately, so um, maybe maybe we play it off as, as like this uh, in yeah. his haste. Perhaps Snake Eyes did not uh, secure his, his visor very well. And while he's running out into this open area, the visor like slips and like just literally blocks his vision. It's like, just goes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, you and you step out. on a landmine. <laughs> yes. Then you no. cut in half. No. Um, <laughs> As you come out, yeah, your visor gets hit askew. You don't see anything out of the ordinary. You did manage to see the things that I mentioned briefly, uh, that the, so, the paratroopers coming down and whatnot, but then you lost sight of everything. My, and your my total my total was a 15, That's but I did roll two 
I did roll two critical failures. So, wow, that's uh, that seems pretty not hard. good. Um, <laughs> well, I, it's um, my smarts is a thirteen. Um, if I'm reading well, this smart, proper, that's no, willpower smarts though. Three. Sorry, smarts is three. You're right. So no, the my total was a five. Five, Kevin. Yes. Five. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You'll see with your with your four different attributes: yeah. strength, yeah. speed, smarts, and social. You have a score, and then there are there, your saves are beneath that. So you have toughness, a, evasion, willpower. It's a, it's a character sheet, and reading is a fundamental skill. Hey, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. We're getting through it together. Um. So yeah. Um. Yeah. So you don't notice anything out of the ordinary. As this happens, though, there is. Uh, a sound that you do hear. You don't see, but you do hear a sound. And I would like to have you tell me, please, as I roll something. Does a 17 hit your defense? Your In this specific case, there's two kinds of defenses. Mm -hmm. There's toughness, which is like how long you like physically withstand something. Mm -hmm. And your evasion, which is how well you move out of the way of things. Okay. Uh, so what is your uh, toughness? Uh, uh, toughness for snake eyes is 15 15 okay this was a 17 that i rolled so all right you suddenly feel Oof. something hit you in the chest you get stunned you don't take any damage but you are currently stunned for the time being as you feel something blast into your chest and wrap Knock around you and bind you up as you drop to the ground yeah. uh, timber okay. starts growling and barking at whatever it might be kind of coming up on you all um but in that moment, I think Duke, you are issuing orders. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could, I want to see if you can um, get all the other Joes here in line, get everybody organized properly. I'd okay. like you to make a social persuasion roll. Ooh, I'm good at that. Yeah. Do you have any specializations? Nope, but I have okay, a D6 in right. it. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, D20 plus D6. Yeah. So that's a nine on the dice, and my social is a four, so 13. Okay. Yeah, you start calling out orders to the Joes. They all have followed you before, ready to follow you in the battle. So they start reacting, getting things ready to go, grabbing weapons, moving out, things of this nature. Uh, they go out. There's a certain area that they all go out to be able to um, uh, really uh, unleash a counterattack by getting into their vehicles and whatnot. Uh, and as they start heading in that direction you notice that there is suddenly uh, there is like blast doors inside the pit that would come down if you all were under attack. Mm -hmm. They come down as soon as the last of the Joes, not you guys, pass through it, effectively blocking them off from where you guys are. It would seem that for now, it's up to the four of you to defend the base and stop Cobra from whatever they're doing. So We got, we got this. Yeah, you guys are good. You guys are the best of the best. I mean, you already defeated Cobra once today. Yeah. You could do it again, surely. Yeah. Snake Eyes, put your visor on correctly. <laughs> Head to the right. <laughs> um, guys, quit messing around. Snake Eyes, Snake Eyes <laughs> is struggling on the ground, apparently wrapped up in something. <laughs> right. All right. So, Roblox, what are you doing during all this? All right. If Can I see Snake Eyes from where I'm at? Yeah, I think you can. You're you're getting towards the front entryway, uh, the side entryway, whatever it might be, where he went. Yeah, you see him on the ground. You see Timber is down, perched down that way that wolves and dogs do before they're about to pounce. And you see that there is a uh, cobra uh, force, like a strike patroller, is coming in towards him. He's got some sort of looks like a gun in his hand. Um, you can tell it's a gun that shoots like a like a. A, a net that would zap somebody. So he clearly has struck down Snake Eyes and is moving in for another attack. I'm hopefully got enough movement. I've got 35 feet to intercept that. Yeah, I think you can get out there to him for sure. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm so, gonna. Okay. Uh, I don't necessarily want to shoot this guy just yet because the anti tank gun versus human seems a little ridiculous <laughs> it is gi joe and we know that no one ever really gets shot that's in true. gi joe Nobody ever really dies forever yeah that's true yeah I mean, like if i can shoot past it's his head cartoon, just to, you're fine <laughs> yeah if i can just shoot past his head to deafen him temporarily just oh. knock him on his head behind then yes yeah, sure. i'll do that but okay. otherwise not nah, just gonna intercept physically with melee okay. well, and if these are all, if these are bat troopers, they're they're robotic in general. So you know that's fine. Yeah, are these bat troopers? Or are they regular 
standard issue. <laughs> I think that specifically in. this guy coming in, this is uh this is a guy. This is uh this isn't a bat trooper, this isn't a robotic trooper as it were. This is a man who is just, you know, sworn himself to the evil allegiance of Cobra and uh is coming in to attack. So I'm sorry, so did you say you wanted to intercept him like physically like run up and yeah. grab him or um, something or did or I'd uh, like use the percussive wave of Bondus <laughs> to knock him on his ass. Oh, okay, but yeah, absolutely. That's so, fine. So you'll notice under the attacks for your weapon, it's going to have, mm -hmm. uh, under the attack, it's going to have a, um, it's going to either say targeting or might or something to that nature. And that would be what you would roll to try to attack with that specific weapon. Does he... Mm, I'm not seeing it necessarily, but I may not be looking in the right place. Um, up so, in the top right corner, I guess you could say, of your character sheet under attacks, yeah. you should have. Maybe it's on a different space. It's on page that. two, probably under weapons. Yeah. Oh, could be. Weapons mm -hmm. has it, but all it says for attack is D6. So I'm assuming that's my targeting. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense. That. Yeah. Yeah. So you get a roll targeting roll. So yeah, it's D20 plus whatever you have in targeting, which D6 you just said. So that's seven plus uh, my speed of five. So that's a 12. Okay, yeah. Um, you fire at this guy, and as the big concussive blast goes off, boom, it rockets into you, but you are steadfast. You dig your feet in. You're ready for the blast of this. It goes for it, and that guy does manage to dodge and roll out of the way. He loses whatever he was going to do with his weapon in the meantime, and he rolls, and he tries to come back up onto his feet off to the side. He comes up on one knee, and he looks at you. He just goes <laughs> across the throat like he's going he's gonna to beat you guys. In this moment, because everybody's coming out together, let's have everybody roll initiative proper. Now, remember those story points I talked about? Because mm -hmm. you're all rolling initiative, the group is going to get one. Um, every time you roll initiative, you get a story point. You all start with a number of story points equal to the number of players. So there are four that you started with. Um, Snake Eyes got you one from his botch, so that's five. So you're currently at six story points. Mm -hmm. And story points can be used to do things like... Um, Excuse me, you can, uh, if you uh, do a bad roll, you can re-roll some of your dice. You can use it to uh, basically, uh, if you have any sort of skills that you don't have a specialization in, you can use a story point to gain a specialization in. Uh, there's a bunch of different things. Add to your defense, things of this nature. So really just uh, more cinematically, there's things that we can do. I mean, there's a list, but I'm not going to throw a bunch of lists at you. But, uh, but we can talk through if there's a way you want to use them. We can talk through how you... You might want to do it, but, um, but yeah, that is a shared pool. Keep that in mind. So if you have, uh, if one person uses multiple, it comes from everybody's share, but you can always earn more through different methods as well. So, um, so okay. just so you know, you have that. All right. Okay. All right. So your initiative is, it's a skill, just it's found underneath your speed. So you could have a die ranking in that potentially. Oh, gotcha. Right, so let's go down the list. Duke, what did you end up with? Uh, six plus four, ten. Ten, okay. And Roadblock? Twenty-one. Wow, nice. <laughs> and Scarlet? Ten. Okay. Snake Eyes? Seven. Seven? I think that's pretty fitting right now. I rolled another one on this D20, so this one, this one's done for the night. That was a time out. <laughs> you want I... another natural one, you said? Yeah, I rolled, that was another that's, natural one. That's, a, that's another story point. Uh, oh, on my D2, I rolled a natural one. Does that count? It's a natural one on the D20. But, okay. Uh, Whew, good. That's, yeah, that's good. That, that had me worried. I'm going to grab some other dice. I'll be right back. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> go right ahead, go right ahead. Yeah, that's pretty bad rolling. Um, <laughs> Alrighty. So it is going to be the baddies, so to speak. They're going to go on a shared initiative. For now, there might be something that happens in a minute to change that, but they're going to go on a 14. So it's going to, of course, be Roadblock going first with a 21. So on your turn, mm -hmm. you have a number of actions kind of based upon what your speed is. Okay. Uh, what is your speed score specifically, Roadblock? 
Uh, speed score is five specifically. Wow, that's that's great. So mm -hmm. if your speed is that high, you're basically going to have a move action. This would be things like you know taking a move or things that might be a move action, like switching weapons around, stuff like that. Uh, standard action, things like attacking, uh, using a special ability that might require a standard action, stuff like that. Um, and a number of free actions equal to half of your speed score. So in your case, you're going to have a move action, standard action, and two free actions. And free actions could be things like I reload real quick, I yell out a command, I stow away something. Uh, there's a bunch of different things you can do. So you have a little more leeway because you're because you're so fast, as it were. So what mm -hmm. would you like to do at this moment? Now, you are currently armed. You said you have your big concussive blast gun, your uh, your rail gun, as it were. You do have that. <laughs> so what do you want to do in this moment? I... Way breaking Snake Eyes out of the whatever's currently binding him to be a free action or a part of the standard action. I think that would be a standard action, yeah, to try to get him out of there. Um, if you're going to try to like untangle him, uh, you can maybe do it as a move action if you want to try to just like cut him out or something like that. It might be you know, yeah. you'd have to make a check either way, I guess you could say. It would just depend on what type of skill you use for that, depending on how yeah. you do it. Because essentially, I'm just crouch there covering him so sure. i'm not going to use a move necessarily so if i can sacrifice that move to get him free to maybe hopefully give him an advantage on his next <laughs> role or on his next thing that he does uh or even just free him so he'd do an actual standard action i'd like to do that you so that would better dice sure <laughs> <laughs> ouch oh, good, good um i'll take it but yeah, and that's just going to be, I think, for Roblox, he just robbed Braun just to break it. Yeah, okay, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, so you're going to do a strength Braun check. Mm -hmm. that, oh, that is a four on the D4, Ooh, which is okay. his uh, rating in Braun. Mm -hmm. Plus Great. 12 is 16, plus 5 is... I have to do math. Uh, 21 again. 21, I yeah. Think. You have no problem, especially with that four, that is going to make it a critical. You have no problem ripping this thing off. So as you pull it off, it actually gets short-circuited. There's a sizzle as you snap it off. It's rendered, it's not going to be working the right way. Even if it gets loaded back into that gun that fired it, it's not working again. And you rip it off a of snake, guys. Timber, as you're doing this, stands behind you. <laughs> like ready to face <laughs> off against the Cobra soldier in case they try to attack you. Uh, but yeah, you get him free. Um, is there anything else you want to do? You still have, uh, that was your standard. So you still have a move action. You still have two free actions. So you have quite a bit you could do still if you want. Uh, draw fire if I can. Like make myself the target here for the guy that, it did the motion like, uh uh, you don't go after my friends here. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to move into his threat range. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, you, as you get Snake Eyes free, you get up. Yeah. You trudge in and uh, Timber stays with Snake Eyes. He doesn't come in behind you. And you trudge mm -hmm. in towards the guy and you see he gets that gun back up and he aims it at you. Um, it is his turn. So, he is going to try <laughs> to actually fire. He actually pulls the trigger and then. Nothing happens because this net's been ripped out of it. And he, oh, he sees you coming and he tries to, he just looks around. He throws it down. Oh, no. Oh, oh, puts his hands up like so. And he doesn't want any part of you. However, the other Cobra soldiers coming down out of the helicarrier, they continue to belay down. They start zip lining down and they land on the grassy part just outside the fence line. And they start moving and running in towards the fence line. You see the one of them, everybody sees this, one of them pulls this giant pair of scissors off his back. <laughs> and starts running towards the fence line. He's going to cut the fence open. Um, that's what they're going to do because they have to get up to you guys. So uh, mm -hmm. we did have a tie with initiative with Duke and with Scarlet both going to 10. So uh, if you could, let's uh, determine this by what is your speed ranking, Scarlet? Five. And what is yours, Duke? Do you win. Four. Okay, so Scarlet, <laughs> you'll go next then. Okay. Scarlet, um, you said you have a five speed as well, so you have the same amount of movements that Roadblock does with your five speed. Okay. 
So she's she was running out uh, after Snake Eyes uh, sees the basically sees that uh, Roadblock is breaking Snake Eyes free, which is what she was going to do. And then the guy with the net gun is being very threatening, but there's also the guy going for the fence. So she brings up her pistol and sight acquires. And is there an aim action? I was trying to get to the aim uh, or yep. to the uh, thing. There so. is an aim action. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what it is is for every free action that you use to aim, you can use okay. up to three. You can get what's called an upshift. Now, an upshift is something unique to this system too. What okay. will happen with an upshift is whatever your die ranking is. If you get an upshift, which can be from using abilities like this, or it could be from situational stuff, you go up one die type. So, for example, if you're gonna, if you normally have a D6 to fire, if you have an upshift, you're rolling a D8, okay, or a D10. Um, and like I said, you can do that up to three times. You can always give up a bigger action type for a smaller one. So, for example, you could move twice by giving up a standard. You could do more free actions by giving up move actions. Um, okay, so. So there's possibilities to do that. So yeah, so I'm gonna you say have two free actions. So you two free actions twice, unless you want to give up stuff. Yeah. Okay. So I think she was using a move action, and she will like skid to a stop next to uh, Snake Eyes, just as the 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 net gets ripped, mm -hmm. and she'll like look around, kind of do a threat assessment in her head, and then like ball on her knees, like steady aims down the site at the guy running for the fence with the giant scissors okay. and is going to attempt to uh i'm gonna just try and shoot the scissors to break them so he oh. can't cut the fence okay very cool very cool so, uh, so i will you're gonna use just the two free actions or do you want to use i'm gonna use both wide? okay cool so you have two and up shift so what is your current uh that that would be targeting d4 for there. targeting okay so now you're going to roll a d8 instead of a d4 yeah. Cool. And then the D20, and then I add my speed rating, right? Yep. You got it. Okay. All right. Well, that uh, couldn't have gone a hell of a lot better. Well, it could have <laughs> gone a little bit better. Uh, so that's an 8 on the D8, a 19 on the D20. So that's 27 plus 5 is 32. Okay. And with that 8 on the D8, that's a critical. So what oh, happens okay. is, what is your damage Ooh. normally for that weapon? It should be listed under the uh, effects section. Pistol okay. is do, 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 attack one sharp. Um, <laughs> hang on. That's what mine says, yeah, that's it. yeah, mine doesn't have a damage. What It says one sharp? Is that what it says? I have range, hands, attack, effects is one sharp. Okay, so it does one sharp damage, is what that means. So it's uh, it said like sharp damage. It's like it's not like piercing. It's okay. Sharp. So yeah, so because it's a critical, you're going to do two sharp to the scissors, and so there's a ching in the scissors as he pulls them up. They shatter and break. Shards of metal turn into shrapnel and spray down around him. He's gonna say, I'm gonna say he takes one of the sharp because the scissors. Like kind of buff it down into him uh so he oh he stumbles down for a second the scissors are gone he's not cut through the fence with these things anytime soon yeah it was a single shot and as the scissors like shatter and he screams scarlet just shakes her head and says you shouldn't run with scissors <laughs> right absolutely and now you know kids knowing is half the battle mm -hmm. <laughs> yo joe that's right Alrighty. Is there anything else you want to do? You could still move. Uh, I'm going to stay here uh, and kind of help defend uh, Snake Eyes until he gets to his feet. Perfect. Sounds great. Alrighty, Duke, you are fully ass assessing the situation as well. You come out towards the rear of the situation. You've seen that you are, like I said, the four of you are, are, are out here by yourselves. Uh, you see the approach enemies. What do you want to do, sir? How far up is the helicopter? Oh, I would say at this point, it's about 50 feet in the air. It's lowered down enough so they can rappel out safely, but it's not so close that it's going to be touching the ground or anything. Gotcha. So I have an EMP grenade and it says range 20 slash 50. I would okay. like to try to throw that into the helicopter. Okay. So what the 20 50 means is when you throw it at the 50, that's its max range. Anything okay. between the 20 and 50, you're going to get a downshift because you're throwing it further you know okay. what i mean like it's harder to aim it i guess you could say um so if this would be a 
uh, targeting roll. Okay. It's uh, like a ranged attack, I guess you could say. I'm with you. So with that downshift, what would that be for you? Uh, so is it just one downshift? Mm-hmm. So it would just be a D2 because I have a D4 okay. in targeting. Sure. Yeah, so it's right. a D20 plus the D2. 12? 12 total? Yep. Okay. Yeah, you take out the MP grenade, you charge it, and you launch it, and it fires. And as it goes, it's about to cut a little too short of the helicopter, but it just manages to clip onto the bottom of it, and it goes off. And the energy that pulses out of it ripples across the helicopter, and the propeller's on top. And then the whole thing starts to fall out of the sky the guys who are already down on the ground are like realize that there's like slack now on the cords that came down and there's a couple that were coming down that they all fall and go flying down and land in the grass around and uh yeah so the helicopter's been taken out for sure it starts to lower it's going to crash into the ground soon all right get out of the way scarlet (laughs) watch out Cool, I love that. Yeah, take another helicopter. Nice. <laughs> All right. Scarlet, Scarlet is having flashbacks from the last uh, helicopter crash that she and Snake Eyes are in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. All right, so Snake Eyes. The same helicopter crash that uh, that suffered uh, Snake Eyes, the loss of his voice. Yeah. It was an honorable sacrifice. There is a moment that the two of you have you, your your eyes meet on this battlefield for a moment, and all the sound seems to fall away as the two of you share this moment of remembrance. But then the helicopter they, crashes behind yeah. us, and there's flame. And yeah. absolutely, uh, it's Snake Eyes. You snap back into the moment. Uh, that razor sharp warrior's edge springs back in. Timber is nearby, and you are ready to go. What do you do on your turn? Uh, please, Kevin. Uh... If yeah. you don't mind uh, telling me, tell me what uh, what are our current enemies that are still standing? Like a number? Uh, I mean, just like what do we have around us? Gotcha. Uh, yeah, what's, absolutely. What's 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 coming in on us right now? You got it. There is a single soldier who is about twenty feet away from you. That's the one that Roblox is fighting. Mm-hmm. There is also the rest of the the uh, Cobra troops that are left. There is basically like six of them. They mm-hmm. are just outside the perimeter. That's about. 40 feet away and mm-hmm. they are in different states some of them are knocked down some of them are trying to get to the fence line there is one of them who's down on the on his knees holding on to himself because he's got pieces of shrapnel sticking out of his battle armor and he's like oh he's holding broken scissors and uh <laughs> the helicopter is coming down uh, luckily the helicopter is veering away from the base it's not going to crash into you guys or anything like that but wonderful wonderful <laughs> glad the pit will be spared um we're going to uh Snake Eyes is going to uh, kind of run forward and uh, pop uh, two of the concussion grenades off of his bandolier and like just kind of throw them wide into that group of six. Oh, okay. Very cool. All right. Uh, go ahead and make a roll for that. Uh, again, that's that's targeting. A lot of ranged attacks. That's probably going to be the main thing we see this All evening, right. which is fine. Let's try some new dice. New yep, dice. Please, please try some new dice, Michael. <laughs> new shooter. We got a new shooter. Ah, new shooter at the table, yeah. <laughs> better, much better. That is that's a crit that is a four uh, a four of my D4, so that's a critical success. Yes? Uh what's the total number? Total number is uh 16, 20, and targeting is where to go, where to go. Bottom of the second column. Up. It's a D whatever, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, total is going to be 20. Yeah, okay, yeah, that that is a critical indeed. Yeah, so what is the damage normally for the grenades? Uh, the damage is D4. The damage is D4 or the attack is D4? D4. Attack is D4. Okay. Effect is, effect is one stun. Okay, so they, it is one stun. So yeah, you toss the grenades, and as they go up over the fence and they land in amongst these six guys, and there's a like a blast of like uh sound that shoots out around them and you see that out of the six guys four of them just drop and they're holding onto their heads and there's like, they're they're stunned there's like a piercing shriek that they hear because it went off next to them and they're down too um 
Now, if you want to do there's a, a, there's a there's okay. a cut shot to Timber doing this with his paws. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Now, if you want to do anything with Timber, you can as so, part of your action. You can Timber is Timber is technically flavor because to have a pet, like you have to have certain skills in the game, which sure. Snake Eyes doesn't have. So I'm using Timber as just kind of a flavor, you know. Is a is a an NPC that really performs no effective functions. Let's put it that way. That's but he knows fine. how to speak. <laughs> oh, yikes! He does. It's getting cold in here. Does no. indeed. <laughs> Scarlet will be sleeping. Scarlet will be sleeping alone this evening. <laughs> well, I just thought I would let you know if you wanted to do stuff with Timber. Oh yeah, you could. Uh, but that's fine. I if appreciate that. Thank you. you. That's not a problem. Cool. Um, all right. So with that all being said, I mean, you guys still have lots of story points because you guys are rolling spectacularly well. Not a problem at all. So we're going to cut back up to the top roadblock. You've seen this all going on. You're all up in melee with this guy who just threw down his gun and he's kind of doing like, oh, no, no, kind of kind of look. What would you like to do? Grapple him or do I have him? Oops. Yeah, you can grapple him, like grab onto him. Yeah, that would be a uh, that would be a brawn test. Yeah, I'm gonna grapple to him to you know subdue him. Okay, that's brawn, oh. which is a D4. Okay, he's also gonna roll brawn. He doesn't have any specialization in brawn, so he's just rolling a D20. And you're probably gonna beat him, I would guess. <laughs> he's got a nine plus two. He's got an eleven. Oh, well, that's eleven on the die plus five. For a 16. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So as he's kind of got his hands up, uh, yeah, you just reach out with one hand, grab him by the front of the collar, rip him up off the ground, hold him about four feet off the ground. And he just kind of, oh, I surrender. I surrender. Waving his arms around. And uh, what do you do with him? <laughs> uh, I still have my apron on. I'm going to use my apron as an improvised shackle. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. um, Something about oh, cool. apron strings. There's a joke there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> wrap um, him up. Yeah, you. Uh, I'll say you wrap him up. You got him kind of dead to rights. He's not going to fight you, resist you too much. You wrap him up in your apron and you drop him down. You tuck him off out of the way and you turn back into the battle with your friends to make sure that you all can handle the threat of Cobra. And it's at this mm -hmm. moment as you turn and you see the threat of Cobra, there is, now there's a helicarrier as it's going down. There is a figure that stands up and jumps off the front of the helicarrier that were in the piloting seat. And they jump out, and they roll, and they land on the ground. And as they land on the ground, they stand upright, and they look at you all. Ah, oh, Joes! It's time for us to fight with another I see. He is a tall guy, broad-shouldered. He is wearing a full, like, safari get-up. He's got all tans, uh, different types of pouches. He looks like a Rob Liefeld sketch. Just pouches <laughs> everywhere. And uh, he's got um, a safari hat on, a red bandana. Um, you all have seen this member of Cobra before. This guy's name is Beef. He is... He's what's he for is, dinner. <laughs> that's it. Where's the beef? Here he is. Um... <laughs> Beef is a master of some special operating war drones, the R-A-W, Robot Arachnid Wrangler Spiders drones. And right as you remember that, he pulls a, a little oh. controller off his belt. Wait. Raw beef? Yeah. <laughs> yes. There we go. He says, what, what, Time to what? turn up the heat. This and is literally oh, this is literally Roadblock's like nemesis. <laughs> yes, there we go. <laughs> No. I'm coming for you, Roadblock. And Too low of a temperature. He pushes some buttons on the, the the device he has. He turns something, and his backpack that he has on opens up, and like these weird robotic legs start coming out of it. And one by one, these four robotic spiders, about the size of timber, so these are about the size of like big wolves, they clack down onto the ground and they start scurrying towards you. Again, you all have faced the robot arachnid wranglers before, but let's real quick. I want to see. Let's have everybody make a smarts. Uh, well, this could be a couple of things, either technology or science to see mm. what exactly you all know about. I'll let you decide what you want to roll. Oh, let's let's just roll. roll smarts for uh, yeah for Snake Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which skill are you going to use, Snake Eyes? Smarts. 
Okay, well, yeah, smarts is your is one of your essences. So uh, science or technology, I have neither. Okay, so then you just roll d twenty. That's fine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I I'm just using smarts. I get what you're saying. I got you. Hey, Roblox in the same boat. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. So seventeen for snake eyes. Okay, seventeen's good. I like that. Uh, Roblox got a fourteen. Okay, another good roll. Duke got a twenty. Oh, Ooh. nice, nice. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. So yeah, you've all faced off against the raw before, so you know that yeah they are uh, these robotic spiders they can climb up walls they actually have certain attacks too where they can actually try to grapple you uh similar to what happened with snake eyes but on a larger scale they're harder to get out of um they have a pretty hard bite too if they get up too close to you so uh something to worry about uh and you do know that they are controlled by beef's little controller that he has so if you could take him out you could potentially take out the spiders too um so that's on the turn. The other Cobra soldiers. His beef pack. Running... What's that? I'm sorry. His beef pack. His beef pack. That's it. <laughs> yeah. The other Cobra soldiers that were all knocked down and everything, they all get up to their feet and they're all like, yeah, let's get them, Cobra. And they all start running towards the fence behind the spiders. So there are four spiders, four soldiers, and Beef's just kind of out there standing, <laughs> turning the little device, controlling his spiders. Uh, Scarlet, you're up. So how far away is Beef from us? He is 50 feet. Oh, I'm sorry. I should say, right as your turn starts, by the way, the helicopter explodes all over the ground behind him. So it shadows him for a moment with the silhouette of the explosion. Okay. Um, hmm. Can we say Beef looks like Dolph Lundgren? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, like classic like Universal Soldier. Universal like Rocky, Soldier. Rocky yeah. for yeah. Dolph Lundgren. I love that. I love that. Uh, so I think Scarlet is going to um, start heading for Beef, but she notices that her motorcycle from before She's is parked of off to the side. Okay, okay. Uh, this is going Scarlet. Okay. Uh, so one of the one of the like spider things like gets in front of her, and she does a slide as part of her movement to get underneath it, yeah. and comes up next to her motorcycle, and. That's 30 feet of movement, I'm going to say. And she reaches down and grabs her spare crossbow off the motorcycle since her primary one is in in the weapons area, you know, because safety. And she brings it up and it's going to turn to shoot the uh, shoot the thing she just slid under. So um, I'm going to so I'm going to use one free action to get the weapon. I'm going to use one free action to aim and then I'm going to shoot and then use my move. So that should be everything. I love it. Yeah, perfect. So that becomes a D6 instead of a D4. Mm-hmm. And I'm just making sure you are shooting one of the uh, spiders? Yes, one of the spiders. The spider I just did the power yep. slide under. Yep, just making sure. So that is a t- 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 18, or no, 23. Yeah, I think a 23 will do it. <laughs> okay. Now with the crossbow, martial arts sharp silent sniper. It does one sharp. Mm-hmm. So I guess I just do one sharp. Yep. What is uh, what does scope and laser sight give me? Uh, it should give you an aiming bonus, I believe. I don't have that right in front of me right this moment, but I believe um, it gives you an aiming bonus. I'd have to look it up specifically. I hang on a second. Well, we'll uh, we'll have it. We'll get to that. Um, I okay. Don't want to slow it down. I was gonna say if it would have been a, if it would have been a, like give me a, a a shift for aim maybe, uh you know just we'll do yeah, what it is uh, I'll, yeah, I'll look it up. With the laser sight gives you an additional upshift it says. Okay, so that would have been uh, four more damage, so or no that would have been four more to hit. Yeah, which will yep. Yeah, so <laughs> I I hit no matter what, so yeah. one sharp. Okay, yeah. You fire, yeah, so you slide in under, grab the crossbow, turn to whip it, and you fire when the crossbow bolt slams into the joints of one of the legs right by the body, and it, it starts kind of fighting against that for a minute, and you can tell it's it's slightly hindered. It's going to take more than just one to take it down, though, but you could definitely okay. tell you did injure it. There's some sparks that buzz out of where your crossbow bolt is sticking out of. Okay. So it's a well-placed shot for sure. Nice. So Duke. Okay. It's up, it's up to you. Oh, well, Duke wants to make sure his soldiers are protected, so he's got to make sure these little drones get stopped as fast as possible. 
Yeah. So he's going to pull out his assault rifle, take a knee, yeah. aim down the sights, looking right at Beefcake there's little control panel. And he's okay. going to take his actions to aim at it and try to shoot. Excuse me. Excuse panel. me, Chris. It's Beef. <laughs> it's just Beef. You have it's your nickname beef. for him. I have mine. <laughs> <laughs> So I missed the nickname. Was it Mr. Meat? Because you've used that one before. Nope. nope. Oh. <laughs> That's my stage name. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Targeting his uh, control. Yeah, right. my. So 19 total. Against the device? Yep. Shooting at the okay. device. You fire at the device, and as, you, as your shot goes off with your assault rifle, it goes off, and beef... Despite reason, despite all not logic, he whips his hand out of the way. Not so fast, Joes. <laughs> and you do miss it, unfortunately. Now I um, will remind you all with story points. You can reroll some of your dice. I mean, right now it's kind of after you know the effect. But if you want to use it, I'll let you because maybe we didn't remember that. But you could <laughs> reroll any dice that is a one, or you can uh, add a potential specialization to a skill that you have which will let you roll more dice uh maybe next time i have another idea uh, after he, duke shoots he stands up though and he he runs forward towards where probably roadblock is because i think roadblock is still back here with, near me anyways absolutely absolutely and snake eyes you see the roadblock is taking care of that guy who attacked you you look up you see everything that's going on the spiders are coming in towards you there are two of them that are plopping down over the top of the fence wall into the area where you guys all are. Uh, what do you do? And Beef is still up and beefy? He's up <laughs> and beefy, my friend. He's beefy. Beef is still beefy. There. All right. Yeah, he's on the other side of the fence, uh, just standing there still where he was, uh, still playing with his controller. <laughs> all right. Snake Eyes is going to make a play Think for the Beef. Children. Make a play for beef. Okay. Um, let's see what we've got that could possibly be helpful. Uh, let's see. There's some number of roll perks here I was trying to find more information on. But um, maybe we'll do that for next time because I don't want to spend a lot of time looking stuff up at the moment. Um, we're going to try and get close to beef. Um, so... Snake Eyes is going to do a the classic martial arts sprint across okay. the battlefield. Uh, maybe kip up. Maybe he'll okay. kip up over one of the uh, the spider robots and uh, bring his uh, his katana out. Oh yeah! And to try and uh, get the drop on beef, and again, uh, aiming for the controller in his hand. Okay. Let's have you go ahead and roll an either athletics, which is under your strength, or mm -hmm. an acrobatics, which is under your speed, okay. because you said you want to do some flipping and jumping around, and yeah. we'll see how well you do on that. Well, I've got martial arts under might. Does that give me... Uh, you know or what? because we're doing the jumping, does it make it makes more sense to do the acrobatics? Probably. I, I, you know what? I'm fine with that. That makes sense. I mean, thematically, that makes a lot of sense. So you have a specialization of martial arts, is what mm -hmm. you're saying? Yes. Cool. What you do with the specialization is, if you take a look, it's uh, it's under your athletics. You said, yeah. Okay. Uh, so no, what it's is, under might. It's under might. Uh, okay, or martial it's under arts. Your might. What is your ranking in might? A D four. Okay. Because you have a specialization underneath your might, when you roll for something that is might using that specialization, you're going to roll the D twenty, mm -hmm. the D four, and the D two, and pick the better of the D two and D four to add to your roll. Oh, okay. All right, I like that. Now, normally when you roll the max number on a die, you could potentially have a critical. That's for all the dice except for a D2, however. Otherwise, people would be critting all day. <laughs> but uh, something all right, to keep so in mind. I also be, dice to roll, basically. Because I have expertise in might, I also get a, a, a it said a up two. Uh, two, uh, two up shifts? Yeah, two up shifts. Okay, so that would make your might effectively for this would be instead of the D4, it's a D8. So you're going to roll a 2, oh, a D4, cool. a D6, and a D8 and take the best to add to your D20. All right, let's do That's that. That's a pretty awesome ability right there. Snake eyes. D20, that, 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 and that. All right. Roll four dice and see what happens. <laughs> 
It's a nat one on all of them. Oh no, no. Wait, so that's... <laughs> Don't do that. Not again. Nineteen. Should I, I I got the best on the D six. Um, so I'll take that. So it's a nineteen plus six, twenty five. So you got a six on the six. Yes. Okay, so this, uh, yeah, it gives you a little bit of a bonus because it's critting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what happens is you surge forward and you run up and you jump right onto the back of one of these spiders. And as it starts to react to that, you throw yourself up off of it doing a kip-up move. You jump up and you partially run up the side of the fence. When you get to the top, as your katana comes out, you put one hand out and vault yourself the rest of the way over. Spiral and flip through the air. And as you land on that three-point superhero landing with your katana out behind you, you look up and Beef's like, ugh! You want to come play, Snake Eyes? Let's do it. And uh, so, yeah, so with the blade. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was just to get me over the fence, right? Yeah, so I would. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I thought that was the attack. I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, no. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like how you were like, and? <laughs> and yeah, I was like, yes, and. Yes, and <laughs> absolutely. I think because of the the fact that you rolled so high, uh, you got that all handled pretty much with your full movement. So yeah, you can still do a, a, an attack. All right. So then the attack will be yes with the uh, with the medium blade, which is a d six. Right. Right. And this I don't think is a sneak attack because he definitely saw me coming over the fence. Oh, yeah. He knows you're there. <laughs> Seventeen. Seventeen and another six on the D six. So uh it'll be Oh my gosh. Twenty three. Math is hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Twenty three and you said you got another six on the D six. Yeah, I, got, so I did not I did max the D six. Yep. Yep. You're gonna do another critical. So you do a critical Woo. on the attack when you hit him with that twenty three, obviously. Uh your damage for that would be what, one sharp? One it's one sharp, yep. Okay, so he takes two sharps. So yeah, as you get up, as you land, you look up, and he taunts you like he does, and you just kind of do that shinobi slice, a single move, as the katana flashes out and strikes across him. Oh! The controller flies out of his hand and spirals and bounces across the ground a couple of times. He goes, oh, what'd you do that for, fool? And he starts running over, trying to get back over to it. Um, but it is going to be Roadblock's turn back over on the other side of the fence. Get that beef. <laughs> hey, Snake, I was just trying to make some beef carpaccio. I can get behind oh. that. Oh. Hey, oh. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, not going to move just yet. I'm going to save that. Um, definitely going to aim at the controller that's on the ground now and fire. Oh, yeah. Um, are there any guys next to the controller did it land among them or are they okay no it just kind of flew backward behind beef it's kind of towards where that explosion smoldering wreckage of the cobra copter is um yeah. you can't aim if you want to try to help with this shot because remember I it's am... a pretty it's pretty high target yeah yeah since i'm not moving i am going to aim then in that case okay. and that just adds what you could do up to three up shifts by aiming so okay. you can if you take uh, basically you take your movement to use as a free action and you do your two regular free actions, you get an upshift of three okay. on your attack roll. So I think I'm only going to do a two upshift because I do have to save a free to reload at the end of this. Okay. So that's that would be four to six to a D8. Still pretty good. Yeah. That's 17 plus five is 23. As well, okay. right? Yes. 23 no, is enough to hit the controller. Uh, 22 is, too. Uh, it's enough okay. to hit the controller. So, yeah, you take out your big, giant, heavy gun. You look down the sight. You aim. Take a deep breath. You know, messing with your food. Night. Ridiculous. You have a party. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the trigger, and there's a big concussive blast. It actually blasts a hole through the fence, and it goes out, and you see the controller just explode. There's a small little bonfire that ripples across the grass as it explodes. And in that moment, all of the spiders, they stop for a moment. And then their eyes start to... And they start moving around again. And Beef goes, oh, what would you do that for? Now we can't control them. They're going to kill us all. Ah. Oh. 
He starts running around trying to actually looks like he's trying to escape now. But he's all up in your grill still, Snake Eyes. So I think for the sake of argument, because he's panicking, I'm going to let you have an attack of opportunity because you're all right there with your katana hmm. ready to go. Let's, uh, so how does, how does like a called shot work in this game? Uh, basically you can aim like we were mm -hmm. talking about before, uh, to get a higher, uh, bonus, I guess you could say there's mm -hmm. not really like a called shot. Like, uh, I want to hit the specific thing. Like a mechanic for it. No, not really. Other than aiming. That's probably the, the closest thing. I guess you could say. All right. You know what we're going to do? Uh, snake eyes yeah. is going to use his martial arts again to try to, uh, trip our friend beef. Oh, cool. 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 Yeah. We're going to make him ground beef. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, boom. Oof. Hey, I just want to say that Renegade started it by naming this guy Beef with his raw spiders. I mean, mm -hmm. they started. It. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, it's their fault. I blame Renegade it. only has themselves to blame. <laughs> yeah. Okay, martial arts. Six can be up. All right. Trying to make a beef bourguignon uh, joke, but I can't really come up with anything. So, <laughs> if he can do something French, I would really appreciate okay. it later. So be a, a, to a sixteen total. Sixteen total. Okay. Um, does it? Well, you wouldn't know. Um, with your just regular martial arts, that, that's based on your might, correct? That's correct. That's based okay. on might. Yeah. So he can choose either his toughness or his evasion as his defense for that, unless it, spe mm -hmm. it specifies. So what happens is, as you start trying to sweep his legs out, he stands his ground. You hit his legs, and it's like hitting a a, a really frozen beef shank or something. <laughs> it's, it's it's like hitting a wall. He doesn't drop. He doesn't fall. And instead, he looks back. And goes, "Oh, you want to do a little hand to hand, huh? All right." And he starts kind of getting into a battle stance. Oh, like boy. He's like, he wants to fight you. It, the oh beef's going about to bring the beef to you, my friend. It's ready to, he's ready to go. Um, <laughs> that's your Here's turn, the though. Right. Here's the beef. <laughs> that's right. Oh. Oh. Right. So that was just on your uh, attack of opportunity. Um, so he was trying to run. So that was his version. Scarlet. Uh, Scarlet sees this about to happen uh hits a button on her motorcycle and eye of the tiger starts playing Rise because i mean obviously snake eyes is about to pound some meat or some <laughs> beef i'm sorry let's let's get our rocky references correct that's it uh and she is going to take another shot at the uh the the uh, now very very angry spider bot <laughs> okay perfect uh and uh, so that was one free action to cue up the music oh yeah i'm gonna spend another to uh aim okay and my laser sight gives me one more shift so that's another that's a d8 perfect that is a 227 so another one sharp Yes. Okay. Uh, this is the same one you hit before. So actually yes. now as you fire upon this one, as the crossbow bolt slams into its back, all of its legs jut out and shake like it's convulsing, and then it just powers down. It's out of the fight. Okay. Cool. And mm -hmm. then I will begin moving towards the uh, melee fight. Okay. And you do. Crossbow bolt reloading on the way. It's got an automatic reloady oh. thingy. Even better. I love that. Uh, Duke. All right. So Duke, seeing the controller is gone, or not in somebody's hand, and it looks like Snake Eyes is ahead of me on the field, correct? Yeah. So I can use my follow the leader perk. Since he's ahead of me on the battlefield, I can sprint as a free action. Oh, nice. Nice. So I like the Duke wants to sprint forward slide yeah. on his leg and scoop up the controller and get ready to start hacking into it to try to control the robots himself. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what um, remains of the controller? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. You can work. A little too right, so be fine. smarter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows? The dice do. Uh, uh, so go ahead, Duke, make us a smart uh, technology roll as you start that process of trying to evaluate it and see just how broken it is. All right. Fair enough. Uh, 18 and 3 is 21. Wow, great rolls. Yeah. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, you start. Yeah, it it is it is busted, but you could probably piece it back together. Um, it might work. You're not sure until you start finagling a little bit more, and uh, we'll see what happens as you continue that process. But you do have it for sure. Um, there, um, Snake Eyes. It is your turn again. Oh boy, uh, Snake Eyes. <laughs> Snake Eyes is not looking the proudest that Snake Eyes has ever looked. Um, not that we can tell with the mask. Yeah, no. Uh, but definitely Snake Eyes' posture is maybe not as... Uh, That's fair. As up and uh, and happy as it usually is, as ex- exciting as it usually is. Uh, we're going to try and do a little uh, little action here. Uh, let's see. A little Snake Eyes action. A little Snake Eyes <laughs> action. I get an edge on something here and what did I write down that was not what I had hoped <laughs> well, we're going to try another martial arts attack because uh, we're in close combat now okay uh, you, do you want to use your katana at all you just you want to continue to fight this guy unarmed because I would say your martial arts is more of your your kicking, your punching, elbowing. Yeah, yeah. I am. I am deciding. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to use that uh, the expertise roll perk again for might. Okay. Uh, for martial arts. Sure. Do you have any sort of uh, like limit to how many times you can use that? Does it say? Let me double check. In fact. Okay. Just, just to make sure. I mean, I, I don't, I don't believe you do, but I could. Yeah, no. Mistake. Well, it's worth, it's certainly worth looking. It does not say. It says choose two skills. You're an expert in each, gaining a, up to when using them. Oh, okay, yeah. So that, that's a permanent feature then. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you're fine. Get in this case, it is, it is might and infiltration, and I'm not infiltrating anything right now. So we're just gonna go with might. That's later. <laughs> that's later. <laughs> uh, I. Don't know how to respond. Um, <laughs> wow. I've left you speechless. I'm kind of impressed with myself right now. Uh, My, Michael's yes. watching this right now, just like, oh, man, what are these guys doing? No, <laughs> Michael's, well, get... Michael's, no Michael's well aware. Michael knew what he was getting into. <laughs> 100% no, true. Michael knows. <laughs> All right, so. Let's see, that's 13. That's so the four. That's. No idea. Right, well, that's was so thirsty. Okay. <laughs> so I am really going to take. Know. I am going to take the D six again on that because okay. the D six did crit. Nice. Um. So that's nineteen total. Yep, that's going to crit him. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, what? Uh, what's your damage for unarmed? Okay. So I de- It doesn't actually say that I. It doesn't say what it is for unarmed. Uh, I don't have that on my weapons sheet. Okay, it's probably going to be one blunt then. Yeah, because you're a martial artist, it's probably going to be one blunt. Typically, it would be one stun because you can't really do. Yeah, so with the with the critical, it'd be two blunts. Yes. Oh boy. First, you have a bunch of beef, and then you got to have two blunts. It's just how it goes. Apparently, I mean, I feel like this is yeah, that's how this is going. Um, (sighs) You could tell a bunch of adults are playing GI Joe tonight. So, uh, (laughs) so, so, so. I think but, Snake Eyes kind of comes up from that, from the the sweep, and like kind of does like does a hit to the knee, does a hit to like the groin area, <laughs> and then try and then tries to do like a like an uppercut to the chin. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you connect, and he yeah he does bend over, and then yeah you do the uppercut, and he gets rocked back up off of his feet. You said he was pegged by Dolph Lundgren, so of course this looks like when Ivan Drago goes flying backwards in slow motion, and. He bounces on his I back. Have a tiger. It's the... Oh yeah, that is still playing exactly. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, he bounces twice, and then yeah, he goes. He's out. He is knocked out. His safari hat is all knocked akimbo on his head. He is out. You can tell that beef is no longer on the and, menu tonight. And you he see, Snake his... Eyes. Uh, Snake Eyes <laughs> goes goes from having his palm up like this to like basically a he does like a round like a kata move also almost, yeah. and then like puts his hands in front of him and just gives the. Uh, beef a bit a little bow like oh, a mid course. a midway Sad. bow yes absolutely i yeah. love it all righty so we're cutting back up to the top roadblock you see that the now remember there was beef there was the four spiders now there's three there were the four other cobra soldiers they were still climbing the fence 
took them a minute. Now they all drop, do, 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 drop down on the inside of the fence. And they're trying to get their weapons back ready about themselves again. So, Roblox, what do you want to do? All right. So I know the soldiers are clumped together. What about the uh, spiders, the raws? The spiders are all spread out. Um, there's okay. basically, there was one right by Scarlet. She just killed that. There is one that's over by where Duke, oh, I'm sorry, Duke's on the other side of the fence. Uh, there is one, basically there's, you know what, we'll make it easy. The the two remaining, uh, the three remaining spiders are all starting to come in towards you and Scarlet. Two are coming in on you. One's coming in on her. Duke and Snake Eyes are on the other side of the fence. So it's not worried about them right now. I'm not going to worry about the humans just yet. I'm going to take out the two that are heading towards me because one of the uh, alternative effects for Mandus is um, a five target cone. So oh, that. nice. Ooh, very, very nice. Cool. Very cool. All right, so you're going to activate that when you, when you shoot? Yeah, and that's okay. 19 plus five is 24. Oh, yeah. Thank God the one was on the D6. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's only uh, an 11 to hit these things, so you guys are rocking and rolling all night long. Yeah, and the damage for that alternative Party effect um, is one sharp damage uh, spread out over five. So I'm not sure how that would calculate. It just says one sharp damage, multiple targets, five 30-foot cone, and mm -hmm. a down arrow of three. Down arrow of three. Yeah, I don't know what the down arrow specifically oh, okay. means. <laughs> so what that's going to mean then, um, that's my mistake for not catching that. What that would mean is okay. when you take that attack, you're going to have a downshift of three to your attack roll because okay. you're spreading it out. You know what I mean? Um, it's fine. We'll keep what you so roll. That's, that's yeah, downshifting the, the, down the, the die, correct, Kevin? Downshifting the die, correct. So uh, okay. what do you roll normally for your targeting? Uh, normally targeting is a D6. So right. since I rolled a one anyway, did We'll just count that as a D1 on a D2 <laughs> instead oh, okay. of a... Yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah, that works too. Yeah. So, yeah, no no really difference. Um, um, <laughs> I'm glad we read that because I wasn't thinking about that. Of course, there'd be some sort of thing to pay for a really awesome shot like that. But with that being said, mm -hmm. however, you fire and just the, 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 the minigun in your hand just rips through these things. Two of the spiders that are coming on you just get totally just blown apart, disintegrated into pieces as you just fire through them. The five shots landing on the two creatures, they're taken out as well. So there's the one still over by Scarlet. The four troopers, two of them land and are moving in towards you, Scarlet. As they come in, uh, they're going to go ahead and they're going to attack you. Okay. Uh, one, one of them has what looks like a combat knife. The other one has just bare hands. Well, he's got some sort of gloves on, so he's like got like a like shiny knuckle looking things. Uh, okay, so the first guy is gonna miss you with a ten, I assume. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The second. I'm guy using is evasion, gonna... obviously. Of course, of course, yeah. The obviously. Guy is... Obviously. <laughs> no. the second guy is gonna come in with a thirteen, however. Nope. Okay. Scarlet <laughs> easily just sidesteps the attack. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not even fancy. Just you move out of the way, and they kind of run into each other as you get out of the way of that. Um, there is the, the spider that's in front of you, the, the raw spider. Uh, it's attack. Oh, D2. D4, D, D20 plus D2. Uh, psh, wow. Apparently, you guys are rolling really good. Oh, you know what? I have story points, though. Mm. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I forgot. I've wait, wait, wait. Are you, you're just making that up, right? No, I'm not. Uh, uh. I can't really use it, though, right now, because you really can only use them to reroll if you roll a one. That's kind of a bummer, dude. That's right. Um, nothing happens. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> They, they try to attack you. It, uh, it, I'm sorry. It tries to attack you, and it just kind of uh, shoots out. It's got like a fanged mouth. It's robotic that comes out and tries to grab at you, and there's like a weird like, kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, it's like, it looks like something to reject of, uh, what is that show? Robot Wars or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, cool. it tries to tries to get you. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Um, cool. That would be, yeah, that's everybody. Oh, no, there's two other guys. But it's fine. They're coming in. They're, they're running in towards you, uh, Roblox. Bring it on. Bring it on. Just okay, so. Like, well, okay. Oh, that's uh, 17 for the one. Uh, yeah, 17 for the one. All right. I'm going to use toughness uh, because um, yep. 
tough dude. Uh, minimum on my toughness is 20 uh, because I don't have my barrier thing that I can use activated. Oh, snap. Okay. Yeah, so he comes in and he yeah, he tries to punch you. He punches you in the gut. And, oh! He holds onto his <laughs> hand because it hurts so bad. The other guy comes in. He tries to jump up at you and as you uh as the one guy is kind of holding his hand you just take him and shove him into the other guy and the other guy trips over him and goes face first into the dirt kind of bends over the weird way and lays on the ground for a minute and uh yeah you guys are not too worried about this uh mm-hmm. scarlet you are up surrounded so by the enemies. the two guys that kind of came in at me they kind of ran into each other correct yeah yeah they're all kind of getting okay. tangled up so they're, they kind of fell at my feet is how I'm kind of picturing this. Uh, so she, she'll take uh, transfer of the crossbow to her left hand, reach into a pouch on the side of the motorcycle with her right hand, lean down to the two of them and just like, like reaches down and like shoves something in one of their pockets, pats them on the cheek and goes, enjoy this. And then runs over towards uh, the next, another group. Uh, vaulting over the spider <laughs> as the concussion grenade that she slips them goes off. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, for I'm gonna also spend a story point to have that look cool. Okay, I don't think you're gonna <laughs> need to roll because you tucked it into his pocket. Um, well, you know what? Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, make an infiltration roll. I'm sure they'll have no problem with that. To slip it into his pocket. Infiltration? I have none of. What the hell? That's kind of strange for Scarlet. Which is I, weird. I have finesse. Could well, I use that? Finesse then. Yeah, let's roll okay. finesse. So same uh, and kind of concept. Because I use story that ups it, right? Uh, or that shifts story, it well, up, right? What it can do is you can, yeah, you can use it to, uh, as if you had a specialization under there. Okay. So that, sorry, dumb question again. That shifts it up, right? Yeah, what that'll do is what's your ranking on finesse? Finesse is a D4. Okay, so you're going to roll the D2 and the D4, take the better of the two. Yep. I, re- I now remember that because I, I remembered that mechanic early, and then I couldn't remember why we weren't using it. Now I know why. All right. So you guys go back down to seven story points left. You guys are not really needing <laughs> a lot of story points yet. We haven't, we haven't used the um, either. No. That was so, the first one I have written down. <laughs> Can I use another story point? Because otherwise, they're going to remember how they were going to tell the tale of Snake Eyes getting his name. <laughs> yeah. Um, I rolled three ones. Uh, you know what? You can roll. You can use a story point. I'm going to use a story roll. point to re-roll all of those, please. <laughs> yep, uh, yep, yep. This die is so going on to roll all three. You got to use three story points. Oh. oh all right. I, then I'm just going to re-roll. But you got seven, so you might as well. Yeah, you I'm guys okay with that? Yeah. Okay. I say go for it because three wines. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, totally that's please. <laughs> please do. So the D2 went from one to two. Okay. Which is a crit, right? <laughs> uh, the D4 went from one to a four, which is a crit, right? <laughs> the D20 went from one to a two. <laughs> oh, no. So that grand total... Is eleven, okay, okay. With a with a crit on the D four. <laughs> what's the uh, what's the rule about how many story points you can use in a single transaction? You can use them all if you want to. <laughs> I, 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 I was, was just asking to just to check. Yeah, you can only use them to reroll ones. Yeah, basically. I, I I kind of am okay with standing on this roll, even if uh, even if Scarlet gets a little clipped by the blast. <laughs> That's all right. It does go off. So uh, yeah, what's the damage on that concussive blast? Probably with one. Like it's just one stun, which is mm-hmm. yeah. Well, okay. I, actually, hang on. It's really hard to tell because it's very tiny in this PDF. Very one second. Uh, one stun blast, ten foot radius. Okay. So, yeah, it goes off. It takes out both of those troopers, and as it goes off, you're going to take the one stun damage yourself. That's fair. Stun damage doesn't, like, immediately knock you out. You're just like, ooh, that kind of hurts. So it's basically taking one damage. And Yeah, uh, I, I, I feel that Scarlet, when she kind of does a vault over the one dead spider from earlier, yeah. the concussive blast knocks her out of the air, and she lands in a, in a bad tumble. Oh, sure. 
Yeah. It's not nearly as impressive as Snake Eyes, who's over there doing the the bow to the fallen beef. Right. The ground beef, I'm sorry. The ground beef. Ground beef. <laughs> ground beef. <laughs> all right, Duke, what are you doing during all this, sir? All right, so I would like to use a story point to say that Duke, in one of his pockets in his pants, pulls out a little repair kit for Whoa. electronics. Oh. Ooh, okay. okay. He is okay. going to hotwire that little control panel because there's still one spider. Ooh. On, and he's still obsessed with getting this one spider okay. to save his team. <laughs> All right. All right. So you're going to roll technology. You're using this to uh, roll technology as if you were specialized. Is that what I'm saying? Yep. Cool. So. Ooh. 16 on the D20. Two, there's 18. 21. Okay. And yeah, you take your little repair kit and yeah, in short, just a short work order, you have this all back together. You know, you were paying attention to the other Joes when on that day when they were teaching about how to do field repair. And yeah, you get the device back up and working. Uh, you push the button and push the controller a couple of times with a little bit of a combination of whirring and clicking. And the spider, as it's making its way to catch up to Scarlet as she lands and is moving up towards it, it starts running up. It stops. And then can I? And uh, yeah, also, you turn the tide with that. Can I Very also cool. use my uh, plan of action? It says Ooh. as a move action, I can grant an ally within line of sight one upgrade on a skill test. Oh, excellent, excellent. And I think Who are you using that I with? think Snake Eyes is next. So Duke okay. looks over and says, "Snake Eyes, help Scarlet." Nice. And you see the hair blowing in the wind. <laughs> he's very he's very debonair. I mean, Channing Tatum had to play him in the movie, so yes. clearly he's he's studly. Oh, well, if it's that case, then the top three buttons are undone too. <laughs> right, Duke's a, Duke's a handsome fella. Yeah. It's true. It's a true story. Mm-hmm. All right, so All right, Snake well, Eyes, what are you doing? Snake Eyes is gonna uh, going to give the thumbs up to Duke and uh, go <laughs> help Scarlet. Love it. All right. So, yeah, you close the distance in short order, making your way kind of like you did before, but now because there's a hole blasted in the fence, you don't have mm-hmm. to do your special jump flipping up over the fence. You just run, do a dive <laughs> roll through it, come up on your feet and continue to sprint. And as you close the distance and you get up to that spider, what do you want to do? Uh, I believe we're going to try and uh, slip the blade of that katana right inside the uh, control unit of the spider. Nice. Just like right between the right between the front, uh, the mandibles, if it were, is as it were. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Go right ahead. Sink. Um, roll that attack roll. You're attacking the I'm gonna spider go that I control? Because Duke helped you. What did you get from that? <laughs> wait, wait, yeah. Duke controls the spider now, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you would know that. So, yeah, maybe attacking the spider is not what we're going to do here. Um, <laughs> what if you, <laughs> okay. what the if spider you is under control? Off the spider. And do like a cool ninja stab on one of the guys that's there. Yeah, you know, I mean, we've already we've already shown that. Yeah, uh, Snake Eyes has a predilection for using the spiders as parkour bases. <laughs> yeah, parkour. Yeah, that's the one cool. I was looking yeah. for. Yeah. So yeah, so Snake Eyes is going to use the spider to parkour into a baddie. Okay. Cool. Um, go ahead and roll acrobatics because I believe that's what you did before, correct? Yep. Yep. Cool. Jumping and flipping all over the place. Is this and then this come on d4 there we go 18 okay yeah same thing you but this time you do it a little bit different maybe you do a front handspring push off with mm-hmm. your hands flip through the air and as you do you would land you're still a little bit of a distance away from the guys that are coming all up on there on roadblock but you can get there next time. But you look right. amazing this whole round, jumping and flipping and running and doing all Wonderful. your ninja Gaiden moves. So very, very cool. <laughs> we're, drop, we're dropping all kinds of references, 80s and 90s references. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. love it. Okay. Back to the top. Roadblock. You can tell that this fight is almost done here. So what? how you want to finish this off? you got these two guys in front of you, and that's it. So show them what for. Yeah, are they the two guys that like I just kind of shoved out of the way just a second ago? Yeah, yeah, they're they're kind of getting up to their feet right now. So, I'm going to use my move action to just sling the gun back cuz it's got a sling. 
grab both of them by the back of the shirt, pick them up. Are you two done? Or do I need to knock some sense into you? We'll never surrender, Joes! Knock it <laughs> is! <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, go do a brawn test for me. <laughs> All right. What is my brawn? I'm, we're just rolling to see if you crit, basically. <laughs> <laughs> or fail. Or fail, yeah. Miserable. Uh, well, it's a three on the d4, so it's not a critical, but uh, that is grand total of nine plus five is 14. Yeah. yeah, you take them and just whack, smack their heads together, and they crumple, and you just drop them. Right as Snake Eyes comes up with his weapon ready, Scarlet <laughs> looks around. <laughs> She strolls up behind the other two, and then Duke, you make your way over to the others. The four of you coming back together, having defeated these Cobras for now. And then you remember, Cobra Commander, when he came over the PA, he said that he had captured General Hawk. Mm -hmm. And you all four look up to the area where the main headquarters, like the the, the main uh, lookout base would be. It's a small little uh, part of the building that juts out over kind of to the north. And you can see that up in... The windows there you can see cobra commander waving at you all and general hawk is tied up bound and gag in, in his chair there in the middle of the room how dare he all right joe's let's go get him yo joe 100 <laughs> i'm gonna grab my buddy that i just wrapped up okay yeah and haul him with me because he's still technically conscious yeah, yeah. What? What's what? Why are you doing? What are you doing to me? Please don't. Hey, I would have came up. Throw me the brig or something, Joe. What? Yeah, but you also got information. And I kind of want it. Uh, Otherwise, uh, I hand it to her or him. Uh, Scarlet uh, Snake Eyes. Uh, I have to make a uh, <laughs> a uh, believe it, it falls under strength. Yeah, strength intimidation roll. I'm going to go ahead and give you an edge. Now, what an edge does is, because of the situation here, you're going to gain, mm -hmm. when you roll your d20, you're going to roll two and take the better of the two. So it's like having advantage okay. maybe in a different system. Uh, uh, an inferior system, might, what some people might say. Oh, I'm not saying I said it. I'm just saying some people might say it. That some people might have. Some people might feel that way. Uh, 24 is the better of the two. 19 plus 5. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you you just stare this guy down. Your words about giving him to, up to the other two who are, you know, I mean, you're a big, brawny, scary guy, but they <laughs> are the stealth. They are the scary. This guy knows. He's had dossiers about all four of you, so he knows what would be happening to him if you, if <laughs> you did give him to Scarlet or to Snake Eyes. And he says, okay, I'll tell you everything. Please, just, all right, okay. Look, truth is, I wanted to be part of the Joes, but I wasn't good enough, okay? I failed my physical, but it's all right. I know if I just try harder, maybe I can do it someday. But that's neither here nor there. What I really want to say is, Cobra Commander, he's captured General Hawk. He's going to blow up the base with the Joes that are still inside within. There's a bomb somewhere inside. You have to find it and disable it, and you can, dis you can stop him. But... You didn't hear that from me, okay? If he tells me, he, it's going to be bad. He's going to put me in, in a different kind of pit. There's vipers down there, and they're really scary, guys. They're really scary. <laughs> I mean, Roblox probably got this guy slung over his shoulder, and he's just kind of <laughs> going to pat him gently on the back, like, you'll be fine. We'll get you fed <laughs> up, and we'll maybe get you past muster. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of, Duke, we got a place to stash him? Time up on the fence. That's not going Fair anywhere. Enough. But we have two problems <laughs> now. Yeah. With the bomb. Bomb and the general. Scarlet's gonna I'd like to see if uh I can use my uh smarts, uh perhaps my insight uh specialization to see if I can figure out what where Cobra Commander might be able to put a bomb to do the most damage to the Joe base. Oh, I love that. I love that. Okay. Yeah, you could definitely mm -hmm. make it. Actually, anybody can make a check like that if they want. You also can work together, too, if you all want to try to roll the same kind of check. Uh, if if you want to have maybe, uh, let's say, for example, that uh, Roblox has information about something like a layout or something. Uh, 
Roblox could try to aid you and basically give you an edge as well by assisting, either give you an edge or an upshift based upon how they want to assist, as an example. Okay. Yeah. yeah so wanna... that I'd say Scarlett just says he had to have had access to wherever it is, and it's got to be somewhere a bomb will cause total destruction of the base. And then she looks mm-hmm. around at the group. Um, Snake Eyes is going to like make a little motion, like, like, like toward the bottom of the base, like mm-hmm. pointing toward where the uh, the power core might be. Oh, yep. yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, makes sense. <clears throat> uh, power core would make sense. Uh, and I'm pretty sure being the kitchen maintenance guy, like that is his domain. He know the exhaust system because he has to use it. For his ranges, okay, yeah, like that would, like I don't there's know a, that would upshift. There's a two or meter thing. exhaust port on the outside of the base <laughs> that Cobra Commander could possibly throw it's a grenade about the in. The size of a womp rat, I hear. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Only we had a T16, oh right? Oh boy. <laughs> um, all right. So with that being said, uh, Scarlet, go ahead and roll that inside check. Uh, with with the, uh, do you want to give an edge or an upshift, Snake Eyes? With the assist, um, let's give let's give a, an upshift. Okay. Okay. So what do you have for insight with your specialization? You said uh, it was a D two, so that becomes a D four. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a specialization. Should I get the D two and the D four? Yeah, you would roll. Yep, yeah, which one, and then take the better of the two. Yep. Okay. Does Duke have anything leadery that he possibly could say to influence this? Leadery. I mean, he's got the hair, but you know, do you have any words of wisdom? <laughs> Uh, Leaderization. Let's see if I have any cool perks that'll help in this one. Come on, Chris, you're playing the face. Yeah, you, no. This is your time to shine. <laughs> Everything I have says during combat. So, uh, <laughs> combat has an end. No, no, Duke's a, a no yeah, Duke yeah. is an on the boots on the ground type of yeah, leader. Yeah, a, yeah, 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 that's fair. Soldier through. All right. Through, yeah. yeah. All right. We'll go as is then. Okay. Yeah, as Duke's commentary. Okay, so all is not lost. That's a two on the D two. Okay. That's a three on the D four. So you know we're we're going these places. We're moving up. And that's a perfectly average ten on the D twenty. Okay, so you're taking the thirteen. Uh, so that's smart. Thir- oh, I get. But uh, since I have, uh, oh no, that's not where I get two D twenty. That would be if I got a an you edge. An edge, you do two D twenty. Right. Yep. That's right. Okay, so that would be a 13. That would be a 17. Okay. Uh, yeah, these are the all crit? great ideas. Oh, I'm sorry? With the D2 is a crit. <laughs> but, uh, well, the D2 doesn't give you a crit um, because of the it's only being two. Um, okay. But it's it's the four and up. Um, but okay. with that roll, though, it's still a pretty good roll. Uh, all these suggestions are really good suggestions. You know that any of these things could be used to cripple the base. But definitely the best place the Cobra Commander could put a device that would blow up and really really hamper this base would, in fact, be the power core that Snake Eyes pointed out. I mean, it powers everything in the base. And although the base is offline right now with the power, um, if it was fully destroyed, the the reactor down there would just ripple out of control. It would just destroy everything in probably a 10 mile radius. Honestly, it's a, it's a nu- semi nuclear power core. So uh, yeah, that would be, that would be probably the best place to go. Yeah. Scarlet like considers everybody's options and her eyes get wide. I think you're right. Snake eyes. He probably put a device on the hype on the uh, hyper core and the systems down. It can't scram. He could wipe out the this entire good chunk of the county. I need to get down there. You guys go take out Cobra, Cobra Commander and save the general, and I'll go work on this. Split the party? Sounds like a plan. Let's go, Joe. Um, Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes puts like two fingers to his chest and points to Scarlet, and he's Snake Eyes is coming with you to infiltrate the Joe base. I'd argue with you, but I know it would be pointless. Come on. Well, Duke puts his <laughs> hand on Snake Eye's shoulder, though. But you're going to be the best for climbing up there to save the general. Ooh. Conflict. You have to trust her. She won't fail us. 
and then Snake Eyes looks at Scarlet and looks at Duke and looks at Scarlet and looks back to Duke and nods and then uh and just kind of and gives like Scarlet a bit of a tilt of the head and then like nods again and then goes with Duke. Okay. Roblox, nice. where do you fit into this? I figure I'm gonna make some noise later. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> All right, so we've got Scarlet going off on her own, and everybody else is going to try to take down Cobra Commander in the uh, command uh, room, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, very good. All righty, so let's go ahead and let's do this then. Uh, I'm going to make a note here, that way I can remember to cut back and forth a certain way. Um, I think we're going to find, uh, as everybody goes their separate directions, it's going to be Duke leads the way, Roblox right behind, Snake Eyes is slinking in the back, Timber runs around. As you guys get up to, like, along the side of the base, kind of semi out of, uh, out of, out of range, uh, out of sight, that's what I'm trying to say, from where mm-hmm. Cobra Commander would be, um, Timber comes up and looks at you, Snake Eyes. He sits for a moment and he rests his head, his chin on your hand. And he gives you a look as if, you know, if you're going to climb up there, you know, obviously he can't go with. So he um, just gives you that look. Uh, Snake Eyes will bend down with Timber and then uh, pull out a small piece of red cloth and like and tuck it into uh, tuck it into Timber's collar. Uh-huh. And uh, and then point his fingers off and uh, Timber knows the scent on that cloth. And uh, Timber's going to go find Scarlet. Oh, OK, OK. I'm really making a note now. Well done. I was going to, I was going to suggest that to you in chat. Oh, well, there we go. Great minds think alike. Um, cool. That yeah, timber does stand and moves off out of the way, leaving the three of you standing there. So Duke, what sort of method of, uh, approach do you think you guys might want to take with this here? Uh, how high up is the climb? It's a good hundred feet. It's the tallest part of the base, and uh, there's not really like any open ladders or handholds or anything like that. But there is plenty of things that someone who's skilled at climbing, like Snake Eyes, would be could probably make his way up there. I mean, it's gonna be treacherous, mm-hmm. but he could make his way up there if necessary. Oh, Duke pulls out his controller, sends the Ooh. spider up first, and every so often you see the spider's leg kind of chip away at some of the rock creating little handholds for everybody going up. That's awesome. You know what, nice. Duke? I'm going to give you guys all a story point because of how awesome that well was. Well done. Well yeah. done, Chris. That's amazing. That's some outside-the-box thinking. I love that. I love that. You know what? I'm going to give you guys one, too, for the timber going with Scarlet thing because that's a great idea, too. Wait, as all long right. as we're having the spider robot do stuff, couldn't the spider robot just carry one of us up? <laughs> oh, you know, just it ride might be it. Strong, it might be strong enough. Um, I think probably realistically, it could carry Snake Eyes. He's probably well, the lightest of the three of you. Probably the lightest, but if Duke would have the most problem climbing, maybe it needs to carry Duke up. Uh, Duke might be all right. My strength is pretty good. Yeah. Could it carry Roadblock? Probably not. Definitely too heavy for him. I was gonna say, who wouldn't want to see robot roadblock riding this thing? Like you know, like what? Oh god! Like she's riding a like Slim Pickens on a bomb, right? Exactly. (laughs) Maybe not quite that. That's a that's a Doctor Strange love reference for all you young people out there. (laughs) If you haven't seen it, don't wait till film studies. Go see it, guys. Okay, so so, good. um, Already. So, yeah, so you guys get ready to go up there. So, yeah, Joe, you, uh, Joe, Duke. Yo! <laughs> Yo, Joe! Uh, Duke, yeah, you call over the spider. It's really easy now with the control device. You don't have to make any checks with the device. You fixed it well enough. No problems with that. You start climbing it up the side. What I do want to do is um, make rolls uh, using the spider stats uh, just to see how if, if it's able to make those little indentations. I'll have you roll. Its strength is a one and then it's going to use for this i think it's going to use brawn to kind of smash in there so that's going to be a d2 so if you could go ahead and roll me a d20 plus d2 as it climbs up i'm not going to make it make climbing checks because it's a robotic spider made for climbing stuff okay Um, although Mm -hmm. it has a high athletics i'm not going to make it uh worry about that uh that's a 12. 12. Okay, yeah. So as it climbs up, it, uh, its speed is uh, 30 feet. It climbs up about 30 feet, and you see yeah, one of its arms turns into like a bladed uh, spade type of thing. And, 
it does. It, it hacks out a little handhold and it starts climbing and doing more of the same um, as it continues to climb up. Uh, at a different part of the base, Scarda, you get over around the other side. And as you get over around the other side of the base, you've been very stealthy this whole time, just in case there's any other Cobra soldiers around. You get to a door that you know leads in towards the section of below, because it does happen to have a big uh, sign on the top that says nuclear reactor core and points. Uh, <laughs> but when you get to that door, because of what kind of door it is, and because the power is out, that door is locked, you find, when you come up. Okay. Um, what sort of actions do you want to take against that? I am going to attempt to uh, circumvent the lock mechanically. Okay. Uh, I have an infiltration standard kit for burglary. This seems like a good time to break that out and use it. That's even great. though I have no infiltration skill. That seems very strange. Guess who does? <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah, but you can't talk still. Yeah. True. So I'm going to try and finesse the lock open. Okay, yeah, perfect. I love that. I love that. So we're just going to do this straight up. Does the, the, the thief kit, does it give you any bonus or anything? Or it just... Uh, it, I would assume it does, but I don't know. Okay. I, believe, okay I believe the lock picking kit requires you to use infiltration if you're using it. That's what I was wondering. If, and also if it gave any sort of bonus. Because I would assume something like that would give you a bonus on your infiltration. The, the lock picking kit specifically calls it's, on no, infiltration no, it, as the it, stat. It's an infiltration standard kit burglary. And then yeah. deception limited kit disguise. Which I... That's what I'm saying, though. The description specifically calls it out as infiltration. Yeah, I think, oh. that's, I think that's correct. That's yeah, what I mean. An, like it's, an it's, it's an infiltration based device i guess you could say okay okay i guess i, I didn't if you use it with an infiltration that would give you a uh, it'll give you an upshift because of what it is that would that would give me an upshift from nothing to let me do the math nothing and <laughs> nothing carry the nothing well it, well it would give you a d2 uh, i mean okay yeah sure <laughs> this isn't star wars i can't just shoot it open <laughs> that's a one on my d2 oh. but a nine so that's a 14, 14 on the d2 okay. using the kit you try to <clears throat> pardon me you try to hack into the door and unfortunately it of course it is just it's way too uh high tech and specialized for that even with the power off it's it's made to withstand certain types of attacks like this so it is not successful unfortunately from what I know of the base, is there a way to get into the room through the vents, for example? Oh, um, yeah, I think you probably could. I think there's something nearby that you could. I mean, it would take some finagling. It would take you a little mm -hmm. bit of time. Um, but yeah, you go over, you find there's some vent, uh, like, a, like a, a tube type of thing that comes up out of the ground. It's part of the exhaust system for the nuclear core down below. Uh, a Stevens off. tube. Sure, yeah. Not so a Jeffries. That's, that's copyrighted. <laughs> That's it. We would never say that. <laughs> but yeah, it, the, but it's because it's off. There's not nothing coming out of it right now, so it's safe okay. to go in. I the Joes say. definitely followed the uh, Nakatomi Tower, uh, like guide to venting. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Of course. That's how do. they did it. That's how they did it back then. Yeah. 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 Everything was big enough to climb in. Yeah. I mean, why not? So yeah, I'll start working my way into the vents. Okay. Cool. Uh, Go ahead, and uh, I'll have you make a finesse roll to try to remove the vent uh, using your tools, um, you know, just thematically. Try to uh, open up the, the, the screws and stuff and open the vent so you can get within. Okay, so that is uh, dirty 20 plus, so 25. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, you remove that vent. Uh, you slip in within and you kind of pull it down in behind you. So it looks like it's sealed off. No one's going to know you went in here and you do start shimming down into the vents. It's going to take some time. Um, and as you, uh, Oh, but down, okay. before I do that, mm -hmm. I hear the click clack of claws and I, and I look down to see timber and I kind of pat the thing and he jumps up into the, uh, oh, the okay. air vent with me. I love so. it. Yep. And then I'll, we'll shimmy on down. Excellent. Yeah, so Timber is with you now, and the two of you start shimmying down, as you said. So, 
over where you, uh, the rest of you Joes are, uh, Roblox, you see that the spider goes the rest of the way right below where Cobra Commander is in the headquarters base that overlooks the compound here. And the spider does the rest, last little handhold. And uh, mm -hmm. Duke, what do you want to do with it after it does that? Um, I think once it gets up top, uh, out of the back, uh, I'll spend a story point to make this happen because I think it'll be fun. Out of the back of the spider, a rope just slowly starts being lowered down. Nice. It is a spider. I mean, nice. It does and, make yeah, sense. It does. It does. And it's one of those those thick cables that the guys were rappelling down, so yeah. you know it's going to hold on to some weight for sure. For sure. And then mm -hmm. Duke looks at Snake Eyes. Up you go, buddy. This is your thing. Let us know what you see. And Snake Eyes nods and starts a. Uh, I tail it up the rope. All right. Uh, are you trying to be stealthy, or are you just trying to quick yeah. climb? We're gonna make a. It's we're gonna do stealth. Cool. All right. We'll do infiltration. infiltration. Yep. Yeah. Of course, Duke sent the one guy up there that can't talk to say, "Tell us what you see." Yeah. <laughs> and I realized that after I said it. Best field leader ever. <laughs> Hey, it's not combat. I mean, that's the problem. Well, right? to be fair, your choices are limited. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> no, we could always say that this is modern technology. He probably has like a keyboard on his wrist. If oh, absolutely yeah. Or a little camera that he could like stick to the thing. Mm -hmm. This is 80s technology. So it's too little. The flat. power glove existed 80s, in the 80s, 80s. 80s cartoon technology. No, I'm, I, I'm kidding. And it I'm definitely, kidding. you definitely have a spy camera. It's got a so we'll, you'll take the little pictures. We'll send them out to be developed. Infiltration <laughs> will, infiltration is a total of 21. Okay. Yeah, you start shimmying up the rope. You get about halfway up the climb, moving uh, to get to where it is. The spider, it's kind of latched itself on. It's holding tight as you get halfway up. And from your vantage point, you can just see the top of Cobra Commander's head. He is gesticulating and moving around like maybe he's talking. He's done another one of his monologues. You're not sure exactly what he's going on and on about, but he's saying something to General Hawk. Really gusto. You can see his arms flailing around. He's pointing. He's just really in the moment. He's just really just Shakespearean in his approach right now. So he does not notice you coming up at all. Uh, down on the ground, what does Roblox and Duke do? I. Uh, Duke looks um, oh, like so. So Snake Eyes seeing this like holds on the rope with one hand and looks down at Duke, and does one of these like does like rubs a hand down his face. <laughs> oh, come with your signal. Sure. He says, "Steal second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, rope yeah, lock. He, yeah, Co you can definitely tell. Is... Yeah, he's yeah. Cobra Commander's up there still, but you knew that. But yeah. you know, thanks, Snake Eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah cover... that sounds like his monologue. Cover my ascent. I won't be as stealthy, you, as, boss. stealthy as he is. Uh, Before you take off, boss. Mm -hmm. Those windows are bulletproof, right? What's bulletproof? The windows bulletproof. in the tower. More than likely, yes. <laughs> but that's where you. I'm gonna make some noise. I'm gonna get Cobra Commander's attention. Oh, we want to create a diversion, a distraction, to help the their ascent, huh? Mm -hmm. Cool, I love that. Um, Do your thing, Black. So, Duke, as you start climbing, are you trying to be stealthy? No. Okay, let's have you do an athletics test then. Probably a little bit more your forte, I would think. That's under your strength. Yes. Uh, and Roblox, let's have you make a performance test. Oh, okay. Or if you want to uh, uh, make a, an argument for something else, you could too. Uh, I mean, it's... Maybe. But it sounds like a, per a performance to me, but... Yeah. I don't think any of his other weapons have the necessary range, but that's fine. Okay. I'll take the performance because I don't want to actually damage the tower. I just want to get uh, commander's attention. Okay, cool. 13 plus four is 17. Yes. You're just, you're just firing. You're you're trying to just like fire at the window, or you're just trying to fire in the air, or it, to plink off some of the stronger points of the tower, so it makes noise but doesn't actually shatter glass. Gotcha. Okay. 
yeah, your gun goes off, and as it does, there is that just that staccato as it bounces across the glass above. You can see that there's a couple of little chunks that come off of the, the metal that's around the window frame, and you see Cobra Commander still gesticulating and moving. Um, Snake Eyes, from where you're at, as you feel Duke's weight as he jumps up onto the weight, uh, the rope below and starts climbing up, mm -hmm. you can see that where General Hawk is, he seems to look up and he notices that the window is getting attacked. And he, but he hides it well. He just kind of does like a, like a like a nod, like yeah, the Joes are coming for me. Kind of, kind of look. And then he kind of starts to turn his chair a little bit. So Cobra Commander's gaze is going to be moved away from that vantage point for a second. But Duke, what did you get on your athletics test? Uh, an eleven. Okay, yeah. So you start climbing up. You're not having any problem hand over hand, and uh, climbing up on there. Uh, Snake Eyes, do uh, you want to continue to climb the rest of the way, or are you going to hang there for a second? So. I'm going to use, I'd like to make a roll for, uh, I guess we'll do infiltration as well, because is there a way to get into the room from above, like a little further on the tower? Like, is there, example, an external vent? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's about two up. meters the size of, a, no, <laughs> we did that joke, I'm sorry. Deja vu. All I over again. <laughs> I think if you climb to the top, very, very top, um, yeah, there's some sort of um, escape hatch, uh, you know, for doing mm -hmm. roof work or working on the All radars right. or whatever. You can get in through there. All right. <laughs> then, yeah, then uh, Snake Eyes motions down to Duke that he's going up. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we'll continue his climb to the roof. All right. Um, try to be stealthy again. Infiltration. Yes. Please. Yes. And I do have stealth as a specialization. Okay, great. Yeah, so you're gonna roll um with uh, all those infiltration dice. Pick the best. Uh, da, 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 da. Bow, bow, bow. Just a sec. Feel like I get an, an extra bonus for the stealthy thing here. Just a minute. Where Ooh. did you go? Some of these skills are not like they're it's so like it's the skill is listed under a different heading. It's not just the skill name, like finding them in the book is a little more challenging than I thought. Ah, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I got you. I got you. So what are you yeah. trying to do specifically? Just trying to do I was looking to see if one of these th one of the things on my sheet, one of my perks, gave me an additional like oh, bonus sure. to stealth. I see. What is um, what does the what does the perk say? Well, say so I'm looking at there's focus perk shadow. I have I have a roll perk friend of darkness. I'm like so I'm like looking at the different ones that look like they're for sneaking. Uh, oh, I see. It doesn't. Say I do have. They do. I, see. I do have expertise in infiltration, so I do get the the plus two up. I do get the up uh, the up charge or the uh, up swing up shift. Shift. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, fi I'll figure out the word. So a friend of darkness is going to get, allow you to do an alertness skill test to see yeah. in the dark up to 30 feet. Which doesn't help me at the moment. Yeah. What was your other one? Um, the other one was shadow, but that's a focus perk. And it looks like it's giving me a bonus to stealth specifically. But I, I'm again, I don't think it necessarily, I don't think it comes into play in this particular moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you are a commando okay. uh, type of character. Yeah, your speed essence goes up by one, and then you uh, okay. get bonuses for yeah. When you're trying to do infiltration, you get bonuses. Yeah, it's probably already so factored in. Yeah, I got a, uh, I got a nat twenty, and then I got a six on the d eight, so it'll be twenty six with the critical success. Okay, awesome. Yeah, you climb the rest of the way up stealthily no problem at all you get up to where the edge of the window is and you you're right behind cobra commander you lock gaze with general hawk for a second and he doesn't let on any, at all that you guys are there but he knows you're there you could tell because he sees you yeah. and you climb the rest of the way up and you swing up onto the roof and you do see that latch that or the hatch uh, opening that we were talking about is there and because it's got slats on it you can kind of hear cobra commander's voice and that's going to come over here and destroy him Civilization. I'm going to take over your nation, and, and he's just going on and on. And as just the final like little move here, I'd like to say that like Snake Eyes literally walks over the hatch, like like 
like grabs it and holds it in one hand and then just like twists like drops down to the hatch and twisting and then just drops the hatch back in place behind him oh wow Slick. i'll spend okay. a, i'll spend a story point for that okay just yeah. the the cinematic of that the little thunk i love it yeah you get over there and yeah you slip within and yeah, you could really hear a cobra commander going off right now um roadblock duke what are you guys doing i'll come back to you one second scarlet mm-hmm. uh, duke's gonna continue his ascent till he gets up with snake eyes all right uh mm-hmm. do an athletics test for me please uh 11 again okay yeah you continue to climb again doing a double move you get up to you're just below the window one more movement like that you'll get up to where snake eyes is uh not a problem at all roblox what are you doing i'm still making noise so all right yeah you continue to fire at the window i'm not gonna make you roll again you've already hit it it's like hitting the broad side of a barn you know yeah but uh yeah you just yeah more there's more pieces of metal come flying down and roadblock are you trying to spell your name in ricochet marks (laughs) maybe (laughs) we don't know this but that's actually like the seasoning uh that that roadblock used on the steaks tonight (laughs) there's some good mineral salt content in the bricks or something or the stones that it was quarried from. And oh, no, it's below. just straight up gunpowder. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Spent gunpowder. Kind. Yeah. Down below on the ground where you are, Roadblock, however, you do hear a sound, and there is a door nearby on the base that slides open, and there are a couple of Cobra soldiers that come out, and they, one of them points, get up, and they start running out. So there's three of them that come running out towards you because you're making all this noise. You're drawing attention to yourself. As they come out, within the base, Scarlet, you continue to climb down. As you get down to the bottom of the shaft, you look down, and within, you can see the nuclear reactor down here. It's not spinning. It's not moving. But you could tell it's still on. And indeed, connected to it is a massive... I mean, this is way over the top. I mean, this this much explosion force is not necessary. This huge stack of dynamite and C4 and all kinds Nitroglycerin of... Nitroglycerin. And... Yeah, everything. Yeah, everything is there, all strapped all over this thing. And uh, seems to be unprotected, though. So what do you want to do? I'm going to look around for, like, laser trip beams and anything that might be... Uh, Lurking as a surprise. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, let's have an alertness test to see, please. Okay. I'm gonna spend a story point to shift that up. Okay, yeah. Specialization with it. Basically, okay, insight. Oh yeah. Okay. 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 Fourteen, sixteen. Nat 20, or not nat 20, dirty 20. 20 okay. <laughs> English is hard. It's been a long day. No, that's okay. Uh, okay. You do see that there is very well concealed. There is a laser net, very small one that's around the section of it, exactly where you would have to go in to disarm it and to arm it. Um, that is there. You do make it out so you don't fall for it, but you do slip in. Timber comes in behind you, and you're ready to start dismantling this thing. So... Scarlet very carefully like points out the lasers to Timber using the same sign language that uh, that um, what's his face uses? Snake eyes. <laughs> Snake. Storm, storm Shadow. Storm Shadow. Oh, wait, storm no. Shadow. <laughs> My brain wanted to say Storm Shadow, but I knew that was wrong. Well, I don't understand why the Joe is named Snake Eyes. That doesn't make any sense, right? Storm uh, Shadow should be the Joe name, but I, we digress. Uh, but, yeah, but, it's a different different story. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I begin working on that. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Uh, technology roll, please. Oh, We're do this good. as an extended test. Okay. You need to succeed three times before you fail three times to disable this. Okay. okay. So I just have a d20 because I have no skills Okay. Uh, in technology, okay. which, again, I don't understand this, but whatever. I got science but I can science the fuck out of it. <laughs> right. Okay. There's it's definitely one. a bomb. So that, that leads off with a 12. A 12? Okay. 
All right. You you start reaching in and around the laser net. Timber comes over. He starts assisting you, trying to do the motions that you were trying to gesture, and the two of you start to work on it. Uh, with a 12, there's some uh, fingers get in there. You can barely squeeze in there, but you do manage to go in around the laser net. Don't trip off anything so far. You start pulling on some of the wires, and there's a single bead of sweat that runs down your temple. And Snake Eyes, as you're up on the top, you look over and do. Please make one more athletics test for me. Okay. The, the Snake Eyes is Snake Eyes is in the Snake Eyes is in the shaft. <laughs> Snake okay. has dropped dropped into the vent. Recall, recall. Yes, so that's true. That's true. Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay, Duke, you are on the top as well. You uh, you could tell where Snake Eyes went, and uh, no problem at all. Snake Eyes in the vent. There is uh, you're kind of above a little grate, and you're directly above Cobra Commander right now, and he's just pacing back and forth. You Joes think you're all the greatest, but I know Cobra will conquer all. And he's just again just strutting around, just trying to a uh, posture. Okay, uh, <laughs> Snake Eyes is gonna uh, pull the last concussion grenade off of his bandolier. <laughs> okay. And then, like, and then literally um, pull his hands and feet in. So he's like, he's got the grenade here, like facing outward. And he's just going to drop down right through the, the vent shaft onto Cobra Commander. <laughs> okay. All righty. Um, Concussion so, blast to the face. Yes. Mask. Um, all righty. Um, what do you want to roll for this? What do you think? How do you think this is going to play out? I think this is probably going to need to be an acrobatics check to come through the, to like just do the straight drop through the vent grate onto him, like accurately. Okay. All right. Roll it, please. I think. Oh, so, yes. It's acrobatics default. All right. There's that and this. Come on, dice. Don't fail me. That's not too bad. Uh, 14, 17, 17, 17. You hold on to the grenade. You turn yourself into a cannonball and you burst down through the vent. You come flying down. You slam right on the top of Cobra Commander like a piggyback for a second. You ride him for a second before you knock him down to the ground. And as you knock him down to the ground, the concussive grenade goes off. Uh, so no, no. So, How you so as, as we hit the ground in like a, as in a little like lump together, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's when Snake Eyes pops the pin on the concussion grenade and slips it into Cobra Commander's cape. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Because um, you know he's vain enough to be wearing the cape. Oh, yes. He's definitely got a cape. He's been motioning. He's with definitely it. wearing the cape. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do an infiltration roll for me. All right. I'm going to give you a... Uh, I'd like to spend call. a story point, if that's okay. Okay. Uh, to do what? Specifically, to, which one of the effects? So... Can I spend the story point to increase my die pool or to to ups? Uh, sorry, what's shift. that called again? Upshift my dice pool. You can use the story point to um, make it as if you are specialized in that skill, which you already are. So it doesn't really give you. A okay, yes, yeah, so that will give me a benefit there. You're right. Yeah. Um, All right. But you could. Um... I'd like to. Can I spend the story point to reroll any ones? You can. Yep. Okay. I will preemptively spend a story point to re-roll once. Okay, well, we'll see if you roll any ones. Yeah, that's what I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You're poised. I am poised. I am poised to make the roll. Okay. All right. All right. All right. That is a uh, 18. Okay. No ones. All righty. You, uh, <laughs> let me roll for Cobra Commander here. Let's get it. He's going to roll. Oh, boy. Okay, um, he is going to roll just shy of that. So yeah, you slip the grenade into his cape, and as you f uh, flip down in, you land next to him, and uh, he looks down. Ah, Snake Eyes, uh, what are you I, doing here? I, I feel like this situation where they they fall together, and then Snake Eyes just kind of does like a, a push away roll, like he sure, he rolls yeah. over his back over his shoulder onto his feet. Absolutely, yeah. Definitely. With his uh, with his hand on his katana, and he's just standing there waiting for what he knows is coming. Yes, yes. And that's when Cobra Commander says what he says. 
And he goes, no, bother, I can handle you. And he reaches for, he's got a like a cavalry sword, and he draws it free. You will rue the day that you mess with Cobra. Boom. The grenade goes off, and he gets knocked flat on his butt. He flies over, and uh, he's like across the lap of General Hawk, who's still tied <laughs> up, and he's just kind of looking at it. He goes, like, good work, Snake Eyes. <laughs> and uh, the concussive blast has it, like, it rolls for a second, and then when it goes off again, the windows in here all shatter out. Roblox, there's glass that sprays down around you, and you're like, oh, as the guys come in towards you. So, Roblox, you got three guys running in at you, charging at you. They they look like big bruiser types. One of them's almost as big as you. What would you like to do? Challenge. It's rain and glass. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> it's rain and glass. I am going to use the alternative effect. I know that's a downshift, so. That's okay. I love it. I love it. Let's do it. Yeah, good stuff. There are three guys, and they're probably all clumped together, which is nice of them to do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh holy shit that was very nearly a double critical it's a 19 on the d20 a four okay. on the d4 which would translate to a d2 because that's a downshift from a d6 by three so okay uh, um that's we're not we're not counting that four because that would should, should technically be a two for the downshift uh still a 19 <laughs> plus five plus two is 26 more than enough yeah okay cool yeah. yeah so you just rain into these guys what's the damage on that it's it was one sharp to up to five targets is that what we yeah did? all right yeah and you just kind of across these two guys the two guys on the outside both drop and the guy in the middle he just gets hit twice and there's some sort of like sparks off of his chest as it deflects off of his uh some sort of metal breastplate he has and he just cracks his knuckles I'm going to deal with you. And he comes in and he tries to get a hold of you. Um, but, <laughs> but meanwhile, Duke up above, mm -hmm. you hear the concussive blast go off below. And it's such <clears> a blast <throat> that the, the little vent <clears throat> cover flew off and went spiraling off into the night. So now you have an opening to get inside within. All right. Duke's heading in. All right. He wants to drop down as close to General Hawk as I can. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. You just jump in. You kind of tuck your arms whoosh, right through the hole and you come down right between where Snake Eyes and General Hawk is. Cobra Commander, as you land, Cobra Commander, he kind of turns and looks up at you. Oh, Duke! No! <laughs> I think is, what is Hawk tied up with? Is it just rope? Uh, yeah, ropes and he's got oh. like he, uh, he had a gag in his mouth but it was removed at some point because it's just kind of hanging loose around his neck. Alright. <laughs> perfect um once duke lands he's gonna pull his uh pistol out and shoot the knot on the rope to try to free general Ooh. hawk i love it yeah very cool so a targeting roll don't crit fail eh, <laughs> just saying right. the way we've been rolling though yeah you're bound to have a catch up to you now well, i rolled a 17 on the die 18 on the other we're at 22 oh yeah yeah you fire the rope and then general hawk he wriggles his shoulders and his arms break free and as he stands up suddenly cobra commander falls onto his back looking up he looks around he grabs a hold of the sword and he points it up at you you'll never take me alive joe's and he just is laying there on the ground, kind of prone, his one hand behind him, his other hand holding the sword in your direction. Um, Scarlet, however, down in below, there is a clicking sound, and then there's a timer that starts to come up on the device. Because a 12 wasn't quite high enough. So what would you like to do? Scarlet, uh, let's lure loose with a word that is bleeped out. <laughs> yeah. Looks over at Timber. And for a minute, like every the 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 ticking you, and beeping. When you say that word, Timber's ears go. <laughs> and she sees that, and like everything, kind of the camera kind of goes into slow motion, and she sees the bit of red cloth tucked into his collar. Yeah. And she reaches into her pocket and pulls out a piece of black cloth, shows it to Timber, and goes, "I don't know if we're going to get out of this. You need to go 
to your master. And then she tucks it in next to the red cloth and pats him. It's like, he knows. Tell him I was thinking of him. Go. And she sends Timber off and turns back to begin working on the bomb. Oh, Timber doesn't move. Oh, yeah. Well, let's do And that. then she goes, no, now. Shoo. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and make a persuasion roll. Not animal handling. Okay, oh, good. Persuasion is probably better, persuasion actually. Persuasion, because of the connection you have. Uh, make a persuasion roll. I'm going to have you do this with a snag. That means you're going to roll 2d20 and take the lower of the two when you add your persuasion <laughs> die. Because he really he wants to he wants to follow Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes told him to come help you, so that's what he's doing. I have a hangout. Okay, what's that? Once per session, auto-fail a roll with snag. Okay, then yeah, as as Michael said, he does not move. He looks at you, he understands what you said, and then he gets a determined look on his face, and he is a Joe just like you to the end. He's going to see this through. So he looks at you, and it's a look of determination. He will not leave your side. All right, if you're going to be here, you're going to be helping. Hold this wire, and she pulls out a piece of wire that she's working on and holds it out so he can bite it and hold it in place. Uh, he does yeah he snaps onto it it looks like it's hard but it's tenderly enough so nothing happens to it yeah he holds it in his mouth for a moment and i begin back to working on it with technology okay roll technology please 15 19. okay that will be one success so you have one failure one success right now okay cool and so yeah you clip another wire and the timer still goes but it starts to click a little bit slower so you know you're on the right track. Above, I'm going to cut back to Roblox real quick. You got that big guy coming in. Like I said, he's like, and he's coming at you. Um, mm-hmm. Real quick, let's just have you and I just roll initiative to see. Just roll a d20 straight. Well, you know, I'll roll a d20. You roll your initiative score. I'll be, we'll, uh, we'll do it the right way here. Probably going to beat his 12 he just had. Because he doesn't have a bonus in initi- initiative, this guy. 13, 18. Okay. All right. So in our little scenario, whenever we kind of describe what these two are doing, you're going to go first. So okay, this guy comes in at you. What do you do? Um, ooh. I don't suppose I could just like use the back of the guy and just bunt him. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Especially if he's charging at you, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's call that a might roll. Yeah. All right. It was a straight D20. Mm-hmm. Uh, 21. Cool. Yeah. So as he comes in, yeah, you take the butt of it and you swing it around, you crack him across the face, and he gets knocked off balance. He does a couple staggering steps off to the right, and he. <laughs> Uh, pops his jaw back and he just kind of points at you and then he comes in he's going to come in with a wild haymaker swing he's going to have 22 he rolled pretty good so he comes in oh good yeah he comes in he just clocks you right across the face these two big burly guys just throwing down he punches you in the face you take one point of blunt damage because this guy has got unarmed specialties, so he can do actual lethal damage with his blows. Um, so, yeah, this guy is not just going to go down. He's not like the mooks you guys were fighting earlier. Um, but, and Duke, you yes. and Snake Eyes are still up at the top. General Hawk is free. Hawk's like, give up, it's over. The Joes and I have you beaten, Cobra Commander. What do the two of you want to do? And this is more cinematic. We're not really in combat rounds, so you guys can kind of work together if you want to. But... Unless you want to fight, then we go into combat room. <laughs> um, I mean, he did say it wasn't going to take him without. Uh, Snake Eyes. Five. Snake Eyes defers to Duke as the Duke is our our leader. All right. Uh, Duke looks at Cobra Commander. And I knew you wouldn't go without a fight, but I thought it'd be more of a fight than this. Snake Eyes, cuff him. It's our duty to put him in the brig. Snake Eyes looks down at his belt and pats and like goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> I did, didn't bring my manacles today. <laughs> I mean, we were at cups. dinner. Use the rope. It's 
Snake Eyes will go get the rope and use the rope. Untie Snake, Snake Eyes. Eyes will untie untie General Hawk and use those bonds to tie up Cobra Commander. Oh, well, General Hawk's you. free. Yeah, so yeah, you take the you take the, okay. the rope that's on the ground that, that General Hawk threw off. You go to tie up Cobra Commander. Let's have you make a finesse roll. All right. Oh, come on. Don't screw up the tying of a knot. Come on, <laughs> snake eyes. <laughs> you know, you know. Uh, you know. Butter thumbs, snake uh, eyes, same thing. Literally a skill. Snake eyes has no finesse. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. So just D20. Uh, yeah, Guess yeah. who has finesse? Yeah, bro. <laughs> The one handling the bomb. Okay. All right, so that's a that's a dirty twenty. Okay, yeah, you tie up Cobra Commander. I'm rolling something. Okay, you tie up Cobra Commander, uh, and yeah, you get him tied up. You huff him, uh, pull him up onto his feet. Duke, you take his cavalry sword away, and you hold it off to the side. The Hawk's like, "We've got you now, Cobra Commander. It's over." And the Cobra Commander goes, "You'll never stop my bomb, Joes." <laughs> As you guys lead him out of the room, General Hawk goes over. He does a manual override on the door, and you all start going down further into the complex to uh, to put him into the brig when the time comes. Uh, but, Scarlet, how is that bomb that Cobra Commander says that you're not going to stop? How is that coming along? It's the bomb. Now that 19. you've got it with the technology, you can choose to roll something else if you want to start maybe having a more of a uh, personalized approach to how you do it. I'm going to go with 19 on that one because I like that 19. Okay, yeah. That's another technology roll? Yep. I was thinking streetwise, but let's stick with that technology here. Okay. Yeah, you continue to disarm the bomb. That's two successes. One more, and you're going to do it. So, yeah, you uh, continue to do that. Uh, Timber is there next to you. He's helping. He's biting a couple of wires. He's uh, maybe wags his tail and moves something out of your way, whatever. And uh, you both continue to work on it. But Roadblock, that guy... Is still at you. So, uh, it's your turn. What do you want to do? All right. Oh, he is in my face. I don't like this. Um, picking him away would probably be a standard action. I'm going to take the attack of opportunity. This is not a good idea, but I'm going to get like at least 10 feet from him to use my oh. gun. Okay. So, okay. Well, I'm going to reuse a, my, one of my story points, my GM story points, to re-roll that natural one I just rolled on my D20. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. oh, yes. I, I only ha- I only see now I haven't been gaining any because I haven't been rolling bad enough, but um, I started off with a number equal to the number of players as well, so I now have three instead of four. Um, I'm going to mm-hmm. re-roll that. Okay, so he's going to attack you with a uh, 19. Does not beat my uh, toughness, so. All right. Yeah, so he does. He like does a jump, spin, kick, and he tries to kick you in the face. You duck underneath it. Uh, oh no, tough! So he goes to kick you. It hits you in the shoulder, but you just kind of steady yourself against it, and he bounces off. He gets back down to that same fighting stance. Right. It actually helps again. move me back a little further to where I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Um, Thanks for the push, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Take an aim. Mm. That is caught. That is 17. Anybody mind if I... How many store points do we have currently? You guys currently have five. Enough. <laughs> I want to spend one of those story points to reroll the one on the D6. Go for it. Oh, that was useful. <laughs> Hit approved by one. So that's a 19 on the die plus five is 24. Okay, yeah. So how, how, how does your attack look? How do you... how Because you, you're going to hit him. How, how does it look for us? Oh. Uh, yeah. Roblox goes stumbling back. He takes like just swings up that big old gun into a nice tucked position. Smiles. You know what? I was having a good day. I made steak. You're not invited. Pulls the trigger. And it is the standard two sharp damage on that attack. Okay. It doubles him over. Oh, and he falls to his knees. Oh, he just kind of is reaching for you, and he just—he looks like he's really hurt. He's just sitting there, kind of oh, holding on to himself, and he goes like maybe he's going to get up, and he just kind of oh, and he just falls. He's—he is knocked out. He's down. You've defeated him. You look up. You can see the Cobra Commander is no longer up there. The other Joes are no longer up there. It all comes down to Scarlet. Hopefully, she's got time to defuse this bomb. So Scarlet down below. 
Eleven. Mm. On technology. technology. Did you just refuse the bomb? <laughs> <laughs> this time, yeah, you click a couple of wires and the timer stops. And you think, oh, yes. You get it. You look at Timber, you kind of give him a nod, and then he looks, he gives you a nod too, and then he stops. He looks at the bomb, his eyes go wide. And you slowly turn over and you see it's click, 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 click. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you got about 20 okay. seconds. <laughs> okay. Uh, since technology is failing me, I'm going to use my insight. Cobra Commander is the mutated, twisted genius behind this bomb. How would he, like, set this up? Because obviously doing it logically doesn't make sense. So I'm going to use uh, alertness insight as my, uh, as my final. And I'm going to spend how many story points do we have left? <laughs> you guys have the the five. I'm going to spend okay. one to uh, so that I have. Oh, that would just give me the specialization, right? Yeah, it would get, it would let you treat a skill as if you had a specialization. OK, so I can't. OK, that doesn't really help. I don't get a shift off that. No, not really. OK, so uh, well, at least I can reroll ones here. That's true. This gives me literally a D2 better chance. Hey, that's all you need. Okay. I am going to spend two story points to reroll these dice. Okay. okay. Well, wait, I can only reroll crit fails, right? You can reroll any one. Okay. I got a one and a six, so I'm rerolling both of them. Yeah, you can reroll. Yeah, any, any die that's a one, you can reroll the one. Right, but so I can't reroll the six, right? It is a six, right? Yeah. No, you wouldn't re-roll that. Okay. Well, we're all going to die then. <laughs> no. Uh, so that's, I mean, it's still a 10. The best I can possibly roll on this is an 11 at this point. Okay. You think, and you just know it's just crazy enough to work. If you just let it run out, nothing's going to happen. Because Cobra Commander, this is a trick. Nothing's going to happen. And you stand there with timber, click, 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 click. Can I try one more thing? Because I figure it's a last ditch effort. I'm going to shoot it in a very, <laughs> I'm going to shoot the detonator in the hopes that it will destroy it enough that the thing will not go off. All right. Yeah, let's try it. I'm going to aim for three actions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 So that makes it a D20 and a D10. Nice. And I'm going to spend a story point to get the specialization. <laughs> so that okay. means I get to roll a D10, a D8, a D6, a D4, and a D2, right? That's right. <laughs> how, how can she miss? No. <laughs> Shut up. Don't That's right. Her. Hang on. Change D20s real quick. There are G.I. Joe fans across the nation right now go, no, don't kill Scarlet. <laughs> okay. How many story points do we have left? Two. Four. I'm going to spend two oh, to reroll the two ones. Oh, yeah, because you used them on the other one. Yeah, two. Yep, thank you. Thank you. So that became one became a two, which is good because that's the D2. The D10 became a seven. So that seven plus my smarts of four is 11. Plus my nat 19 on the D20 is a 30. Okay. It's clicking. And as it gets down to that click, 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 you just pull out your crossbow. Timber, he actually, you feel his body like against your leg and you fire. The crossbow bow goes through it. And as it goes through, there was a final click. And you guys wait. And then you feel it. Somewhere else, there's some sort of explosion. You feel the ground ripple. It's not in here, uh -oh. though. Something else exploded. It and was a faint. In the other part of the headquarters where you guys are all taking Cobra Commander down to the brig, you are passing down the hallway, and suddenly the side of the hallway explodes out, and there is another helicopter that starts coming in, and out of the bottom of the helicopter is a, is a figure who is hanging down on one of these cords. He has an all-metal face. He's got a gun. 
It appears I am here to get my commander. And Destro swings down in. <laughs> he, <laughs> he fires at you guys. And there's some sort of weird device that another Cobra soldier has that comes out and whoosh, grabs on the Cobra commander and rips him free out of your grasp. And they start to take off. And Cobra commander goes, <laughs> You want ever to beat me, Joes? Um, just for a show, Snake Eyes, I mean, Snake Eyes pulls out his SMG and just opens fire on the helicopter from okay. this, like, standing inside this blown out. Yeah, you fire upon it. it it's it's away so quickly. You do make yeah. contact with some, and some of the bolts go, uh, the, the bullets go flying everywhere, ding, ding, sparks, ding, ding, ding. and just, it ricochets off the sides of your building. <laughs> and after just a few moments... Cobra Commander's gone, and, and General Hawk looks to you both. Oh, no, how did this happen again? Oh, we'll get him next time, Joes. Good work today. Good work today. And he kind of gives you all a salute. And I think we're going to cut ahead a little bit to us a little bit later. You've all reconvened. You're all back together. What's this final moment that you all have together as you come together? This would be, for those of you at home keeping score, this would be the, what's the moral today? What's the lesson? What's the now you know moment that we all have together oh, in this man. final little bit? I got it. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fitting. It's got to be Duke. Yeah, Duke. Take us I home, mean, Duke. I think so, too, yeah. Duke walks up in between Scarlet and Snake Eyes and puts a hand on each shoulder. Well, Snake Eyes... I hope you learn to finally have faith in everybody on the team. Everybody played their role right, and we succeeded. Roadblock, you did a great job fighting by yourself. I knew you could. Scarlet, you defused that bomb like an expert. And you, Snake Eyes, you rescued General Hawk. I had faith in all of you. That's what makes us Joes. Then do we do the whole cheer together? Yeah. Yo, Joe, Joe. Joe. Oh, They'll fix I that in post. It. Yes. Uh, and... <laughs> no, we won't. And then, and then there's the scene of like the two kids playing with the downed electric wire, and it's Snake Eyes, and he can't tell them what not to yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> so they all get electrocuted. There, all you see is Snake Eyes going like this, and there's a flash. Oh no! no he shakes his, like... his head. <laughs> there's a oh. tear coming out of his mask. Oh. Amazing. Well, I think that will conclude our playthrough this evening, gang. Great stuff. Great stuff. Uh, what we played was there is an adventure in the back of the core book that I we did modify slightly because, uh, you know, we can do this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But it is mm -hmm. in the back of the core book, and if I can roll up, it's called Snake Pit. So if you all want to try to partake in some really cool, exciting Joe action yourselves, pick up the core book. You can play that adventure in the back. Um, I want to say again, I am Kevin. I was the game master this evening. Told a great story with these guys. You guys are awesome. Was such a blast playing some Joe stuff, defeating this jerk right here. Where... Thanks so much, Kevin. <laughs> Thanks so much. You did a great job. Well, Thank, you, Kevin. Right, Thank, Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. I enjoyed the system. I think it's fairly easy to, to run. I think it's fairly mm -hmm. easy to play and understand. I mean, mm -hmm. minor critique, if I was doing a system like this, I think it's nice in sample adventures to have a a spot in the middle where we could have improved something like everyone oh, said, sure, yeah. I wish we had, this was on my character sheet. I wish that was nice. If they had just put a little spot in here, maybe we could have gone, okay, I want to buy this specialization or I want to add this. That's I would have loved to have had infiltration, you know, as one of the infiltration specialists, you know, yeah, well, I gotta, yeah. Yeah. Just, and, and yeah. one of the things I noticed as well, uh, looking through the sheet, like there were a couple of things like for snake eyes, he has a perk called well-rounded, which will let you pick any general perk. But on the character sheet, on the you know on the standard character sheet, that isn't completed. So you have this skill that gives mm -hmm. you an extra perk oh, that you didn't, that he doesn't have. actually have. Oh, that's too uh, yeah. on the sheet. So because you can pick any other general perk to go along with the one you may have already gotten. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing I would say is that it's funny too because I know my I know Snake Eyes was a level one. Was everyone else's character is also level one? Yeah. Yeah, Roblox was level one. Yeah, yeah. level one. Also yeah. throws me for a little bit of a loop, especially with using named characters like this yeah, in like a sample one. adventure that yeah. you start at level one. I would, I almost think they would want you to start a little stronger so that you can kind of see what that later play yeah. is like a little sure. bit, you know, yeah. it may make things a little more complex for, for a beginning adventure, but it also gives you that feeling of, Ooh, I'm, I'm playing like a hero yeah. Joe. 
Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, uh, the 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 adventure in the back of the book kind of does assume that you are brand new Joes, like you make your own mm. character and get into it. I just thought it'd be more fun for us to play. Uh, you know. The Got it. Adventure. Okay, that makes uh, sense. But yeah, but but the actual uh, adventure in the back, yeah, you're making your own Joes level one that come. Okay. In. And probably if we did play longer, there probably would be a level up section or whatever. I think that's like that's a great cool. feedback right there because I always like to do that too. Chris is kind of play into that and see what else is out there. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's a fun system. I, I had a blast with all you. Thank yeah, you for sure. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. For sure. It was. Thank fun. you, Kevin. All right. Well, thanks everybody. And again, for... and again, welcome Corey to the RPG yeah. Academy yes. Sustainable Adventures. Thanks for coming. And hopefully, in. Yeah. hopefully yeah. we can get you to to come on some more shows. Yeah, yeah, sure. Come back anytime. Yeah, that was so sure. much fun. Yeah, well, so thanks. Had fun. Thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, we'll go around the horn one more time, just kind of let people know where you can find us. Uh, if you want to find me on the social media, I'm pretty much on just on Twitter, mostly actually on the Discord, uh, Berlu underscore Chris. Or if you want to be on the RPG Academy's Discord, just shoot Michael a message at pretty much everything on social media. Is he's at the RPG Academy? Uh, we talk about games. We talk about just normal geeky stuff and if you want to join in a sample adventure you gotta jump in the discord to try to jump in one Corey, where can anybody find you you can find me at midnight alley podcast which usually runs monday nights or you can find me on h at little loud mouse so i don't typically do most socials you can also find me on discord at little loud mouse perfect kaylee where can we find you you can find me on the socials pretty much anywhere at anime girl a-n-i-m-e-i-g-r-r-l you can find me over at Smuggler's Blues on YouTube. You can also find me on the Identico stream, which Michael and I both forgot about earlier today. Every other <laughs> Tuesday night, though we are on a summer hiatus, you can find us also on YouTube and Twitch there. Uh, but that's pretty much it. You can find I'm on most uh, the most of the gaming discords around here, so I'm hiding <laughs> somewhere, <Awesome>. you, lurking, <laughs> watching you. Michael, where can we find you? I'm trying to avoid Kaylee's gaze on the discords. <laughs> um, no, you can find me uh, uh on the socials at loser mlw uh you can find me on a number of uh productions right now again uh you can see me on wednesdays on dragon age on the rook and rasp twitch channel uh for a time of mask and daggers we are about three episodes away from ending that for the season you can also find me on tubular teens with titans which is a, a power rangers inspired audio drama i get to play the uh the villain and um and the villain harbinger with an interesting twist coming into season two, which we just started. So um, do look for that on your podcatchers as well. Awesome. And Kevin, thank you very much for running the game. Where can we find you? you? Thank you. What a blast. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm Kevin, as we said. I can be found online at the socials at Kev Ran Games. Uh, when I'm not here, I'm on Wanderer's Haven. I'm one of the co-producers there. I also do a bunch of GMing. Uh, we've got a bunch of really cool games out there, a lot of little one-shots, some other things as well. Uh, we have a really cool... Thing that I do every Friday as well. I'm the U.S. ambassador for Lanata Turna, which is a new fifth edition mm. setting that is a grim, dark, high fantasy setting. Uh, so come check that out. It's really, really rad. Nice. We have some really great players in that. So thank you cool. so much. Nice, awesome. Well, we'll end it like we always do here at the RPG Academy. If you're having fun, you're doing it right. Doing it right. right.